Hello, my name is Joe Trier and welcome back to the frozen north. It has been over two years since the sun failed to rise. Two years of terror and isolation because Icewind Dale has become trapped in a perpetual winter with no escape. To the south, ferocious blizzards make the mountain passes through the spine of the world unpassable to might or magic. To the west and north is the sea of moving ice and to the east, the mighty Redhead Glacier. No one gets in and no one gets out. Night has fallen on the stricken valley and beneath the roiling clouds, the town of East Haven burns. Our camera pans over the smoke and flames and we see pockets of resistance. Leaders from the other towns and their retinues trying to flee from the green-eyed townsfolk who have, through choice or trickery, sold their souls to the capricious entity within the Chardolin Black Ice Crystals. In the centre of town, surrounded on all sides by screaming crowds, in the town hall, within its strong walls, behind hastily erected barricades in a smoke-filled meeting room, a small band of heroes fight for their lives. Let us introduce those heroes. And what are you doing to defend this room? Let's start off with Owen. Owen, welcome back to the show. Tell us about what Zalfiz is doing. And for anyone who hasn't watched the show, please tell us about Zalfiz. Uh, Zalfiz is a gnome artificer with spiked hair. Uh, for the last, <laughs> with all out from my cosplay for the last episode. Um, he's got a small little six inch spike of uh, hair. Um, Zalfiz, so after his discovery of the kind of um, dark ice map that locates other dark ice. He's kind of set it up on the table to give um, the layout of the town and the surrounding areas. Um, so those little beads of light representing every bit of black ice, some of them moving, some of them not, with the dragon we saw last week. Um, in preparation then of this attack that we know is coming from the speaker, he has Lady Penguin set up in front, or not in front, but positioned facing the door with her flame cannon equipped. <laughs> Fantastic. Also, he's also, because of level six, I got a couple more infusions. So he's also um, infused his armor to be resistant to cold damage. Oh, very cool. And he's also made his little bag of holding into a uh, homunculus servant. So it's flying around, helping build up barricades and different things. I'm going to have a lot of helpers. <laughs> a lot to do in each round. I have a little homunculus servant just going around, like pushing chairs, painting things off the wall, anything he can to block up windows and doors. Okay, so on this 3D map that's been enchanted by these bits of Chardolin that you found, you see at least two score of people charging towards the town square from outside, and you hear a shout, or a massive shout, as they charge towards the doors. Um, Gon, what is your character doing? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Niall, what is your character Gon doing? Um, Gon has... Um, <clears throat> he's used Conjure Animal uh, to summon four black bears. <laughs> that are uh, basically right, any... a shot, so. <laughs> uh, so there's four summoned black bears that are basically up against the doors holding them shut or like any entrance point they're waiting basically poised waiting to attack anything that comes in and um gone is standing back <clears throat> basically controlling these beasts making sure that everything is you know covered there's a crash from outside as the front doors to this town's building burst open now you're a few doors back so you've still got a few seconds before they get to you but the tensions rise in the room curran what's graham doing um i'm just looking out the window trying to keep watch to see <laughs> what's coming I, I don't have any uh any other um way i could help i suppose i'm just watching these big black bears uh holding the doors i'm like i'm not gonna make much you know I, i'm gonna get in by the bears and hold the door why not <laughs> if you wish this this is one of the sort of typical typical medieval banquet halls where there's sort of weapons mounted on the walls and you kind of yeah. glance up and you do see there are crossbows and bows on the wall if you wanted to take a missile weapon Ooh, i think i'd grab a crossbow just to see uh fantastic uh, yeah and our guest today welcome to the show son can you tell us a bit about you and about your character yeah um i am playing uh Kalishtar Paladin by the name of Ailey. Uh, and right now, oh, so she's like a super, not super tall, she's 5'9", but very bulky built and she's super pale. Um, white hair and white lashes is so important to me. 
but she's standing <laughs> at, um, it's so important. Um, she's standing right now at the kind of doorway holding down the barricade from there. And every time it kind of rattles, she'll look between the slit and use her mind length to try to gaze like, what is actually happening with the villagers that are coming in? Because she's very confused by the sudden onslaught. Um, but she's stoic and quiet, so she hasn't said much. And probably hasn't been fully introduced to the heroes yet. There are also two other NPCs in the room, one you know and one you don't. The first is a small halfling, dressed in finery with a red velvet cloak soot across his face. This is Nimsy Huddle, the speaker from Lonely Wood. He stands mace in hand by the door, probably looking quite worriedly at the black bears, but also ready to pe- repel invaders. The second person is a tall, white-haired lady with an aristocratic stance, dressed in furs and with a black eye patch across her right eye. She launches a volley of fiery destruction through the open window under the guidance of her snowy white owl familiar, which scouts the street below. And she's sort of looking out on either side. There's a lot more than us. There's a huge crash as the final doors burst down. There's only one door between you and the baying crowd outside. The older lady turns around and goes, Oh, hello, everybody. My name is Valen Harpel. Of the long straddle Harpels, I feel those doors are not going to stand against the crowd. I have an idea. Gather round. We don't have much time and the snowy owl flies through the window and lands on her shoulder. She okay. reaches into her cloak and pulls out a elaborate scroll case in gold and silver. This is a teleportation scroll I've been saving. I've been saving it for my own escape from the Dale, but I don't know how Auriel's power will affect it, but it has the power to send all of us somewhere across the dale. What do you think? Do we chance it and escape? Or do we try and get to that dragon thing there that you found? Points at the uh, map net Zalfis that you've um, created. We have, we have no guarantee that <clears throat> it will get us out of the dale. I think we should try to stop whatever's happening here. Okay, then. The responsibility. She opens the scroll and it, it's one of these sort of like origami things that it opens and it opens again and opens again and opens again and she's trying to fold it and she sort of pushes you all back and make space, make space. Right. <laughs> and it's it sort of gets to the point where it's almost two meters by two meters. This will take some time to cast. Buy me time! Buy me time! Um, and there's another crash from outside. You need to keep this room safe while she casts this spell. And we're going to do this through initiative. So, could everyone roll me initiative and we'll see where we go for from here. Right. Let us start off with... Let's start with Graham today. Okay, while, all right. While we're there, Joey, you might need to touch your mic down as well as well. Okay. So, I got an 18. Amazing. Okay. Uh, let's go with uh, Owen next. Uh, self is. Zazbiz got plus two, I got 18. 18 <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, Graham, uh, sorry, Graham, I've done you. Uh, gone. All right, roll. What do I got? I got a eight. Mm. <laughs> Seven and plus one, eight. Lastly, Ailey. I accidentally rolled early. I'm sorry. That's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I got a 10. <laughs> I said, okay, so I'm assuming that Graham has the highest initiative from the door, which is now sort of being barricaded with these pitches and adventures, and anything you can find crashing against it. You could hear outside the villagers screaming and baying. From outside by the windows, you can hear the sounds of shouting from below, and you're worried that this window is not actually that far up. Glancing around the room, you are not sure if there are any other entrances either. What do you wish to do? Um... I'm going to smash the bit of glass and I'm going to look out with the crossbow and see if I can get a clean shot on anybody. 
you look down and there are indeed two villagers clambering up the stonework towards the window. One of them is only a mm. meter away. Give me that attack roll and you absolutely can roll sneak attack because this guy is looking <laughs> very shocked <laughs> as the glass bursts out in front of him. So, um, I've rolled a nat 20. Yeah. Nat 20. Okay, so yeah. you're level six. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, so you get 3d6 and a crossbow is d8 if I'm not mistaken so you get to do 18 yep. plus um, so you get to do 26 damage plus your damage so you just destroy this man your crossbow yeah, bolt ends his head roll this. No <laughs> it <just> burns <laughs> in, a, in a splatter of blood and he falls down and because it's such a it's a crit he takes down the guy behind him as well yeah um, Zalfiz they're coming <laughs> so 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 we're straight up killing drums, people. Then, drums we? in the deep. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're fully aware that they're little. Yeah. I assume, based off the map, we know that these dots climbing the walls are these people, right, Joe? Yep. Mm -hmm. Looking the at the map, you see that there, there's people round the back. Now, you can't see a door. There's no sign of a door. But from the looks of things, there's people in the building behind the room to the right. How's the, how are they getting in? You're not sure, but they're definitely there. Okay. Um. Zelfiz is going to follow Graham's lead and knock out the glass in the window and aim for one of the people climbing with his own crossbow. Nice, give me also. that attack. Uh, with a plus five, I roll. Three. A natural one. <laughs> <laughs> so you sort of smash the glass, but your crossbow gets stuck in the window glass. <laughs> And, and <laughs> fires into the frame of the window, and now you've got this bolt right in front yeah. of you, blocking the way. Um, I mean, like swings and roundabouts, you've now kind of blocked this window. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, I've uh, Lady Penguin is still, so she was positioned facing the door, so I'm going to use my, um, now she moves at half speed when she's mm. in cannon form. I'm going to position her back towards the back. Is the back of the room got a door, you know, related to the people that you're seeing? If, in the there, if there is, you can't see one. However, there are there are like a tapestries over there, and there's also a fireplace. <laughs> I have a history of fireplaces. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave her facing the door. I think Zalfiz would just hedge his bets, and they're most likely going to come through the front door. Okay, nice. Uh, Ailey, it's your go. Um, as as sort of Lady Pen turns to face the back wall, three villagers drop down the chimney, landing at the back Ooh. of the room. They have glowing green eyes and are each holding like makeshift weapons, improvised weapons. One has a chair leg. One seems to have what just seems to be a massive lump of ice. The other one has got a scavenged broken sword. They scream and charge towards the uh, wizard who's trying to create this network of power okay well <laughs> that got very stressful very suddenly <laughs> um so Ailey is going to rely on whatever barricades at the door to hold it uh and turn and she is going to make an attack at the closest i guess to the wizard who's casting okay so she pulls out her blade you see like this kind of glowing fire emit and this I'm... is a great sword, right? Yeah. Chunky. <laughs> 23 to hit. Absolutely a hit. Yay. Um, and that is... Hang on. I will get faster with this dice. Oops. That's two of them. Sorry. No, not at all. You're okay. Okay. <laughs> Plus four, so 14. Points 14 damage. points of damage. You cut mm. down the screaming villager as he runs across the table, leaping towards the network of power, the webwork of power. You strike him down from the air with your Hellfire Greatsword. I believe you have another attack? I do. Oh my god, barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> Paladins. Uh, Paladins! Oh! Um, but yes. Uh, okay, 10 for the next attack. Uh, 10 is not going to do it. So you sort of step back, blocking him away from the, the board, um, the this, this kind of uh, sheet that she's pulled out. He hasn't damaged it, but you haven't managed to cut him down. Um, we are to the bottom of the round. Gone. Okay, so um, gone, seeing these three people running towards the... Um, well, there's probably... Uh, he, he goes to attack the people running towards the wizard. Gone will uh, wild shape into a giant... Uh, basically a huge spider, like a gigantic spider. 
Uh, <laughs> and when he does that, he is going to use his web to entangle the person. Gone is, he doesn't want to kill people like Graham so casually is doing. <laughs> 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 and he's going to use a web to basically tie the person down. Actually, yeah, he's going to use a web to tie the person down. Before you roll, I just need to point out, and, and Owen as well, um, because you have both co cosplayed, and obviously, Niall, you have actually <laughs> literally you. painted yourself <laughs> blue, you can both add inspiration to your character sheet. This is incredible. Ooh, I, I, feel, I, feel I've, I feel I've really... I feel like Owen's really just really I feel like I've robbed him. I really feel like I've robbed him. We'll take it. <laughs> um, Niall should get a wish or something. Yeah, I should get wish. I should just get wish. <laughs> I wish I wasn't blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. so yeah, I use I use a web my web to hit that person. So it's a do, 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 do. he'll be restricted if I hit or restrained. So that is with plus plus five to hit. Oh. All right. Watch me roll a one now. Here we go. I quick roll. It's rolling the dice. <laughs> oh, 16 oh, plus 5, I got a 21. That's absolutely a hit. He, uh, The web catches him full in the face. He reaches up two hands as he is blown back off his feet and sent flying backwards across the room. At that minute, Valen Harpel shouts out, Everybody, get onto the paper quick! We don't have much time! Um, and if anyone was wondering, yes, I have watched Mrs. Doubtfire today with my daughter, and no, it has not <laughs> aged well. <laughs> oh, no, no, it hasn't. No, it really it hasn't. It is very, very, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, everyone, in, unless you don't want to, everyone can make this take this opportunity to leap onto the page, onto the page, the uh, the spell which is gaining power and momentum. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, one hundred six percent. Yeah. And, and um, my little penguins going to fuck around to it as well. Okay, um, you have managed to, you've, you've successfully negotiated my teleportation puzzle. And we, <laughs> uh, as power gathers in the intricately drawn magical circle, there is a huge explosion and you are engulfed in white light. Time escapes you as your awareness stretches into an infinite blend of crystalline fractals that spiral out into a multi-dimensional tunnel. Endless transforming shapes fly through the pat fabric of space-time, forming whirling images and abnormal non-Euclidean angles. Mm -hmm. As you pass through the event horizon, logic and belief become one in spectacular and paradoxical formations until neither exist within you, leaving only raw singularity. Finally, when your consciousnesses are stretched to the point of breaking, an unseen presence takes control. Whether it is Valen's spell, your own will, or another entity entirely, you don't know. But you find yourself being drawn into an impossibly bright window of light set against the maddening infinity of blackness, and you spiral out into... Where? Where are you? Graham, you find yourself in darkness so absolute you cannot tell if your eyes are open or closed. You feel cold stone against your cheek. The passageway or tunnel or room, wherever you are, is far wider above you than below. It's, it's like a triangle, upside down triangle. And at the base of this passage where you're lying is a crack, no wider than three inches. You are cold, colder than you remember being. What do you do? Try to smash the crack, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Punch you're it. kind of lying on it. So imagine you're sort of lying at the base of this sort of yeah. stone triangle. Though it's complete darkness. Eyes open, eyes closed makes no difference. But mm -hmm. You're lying on this sort of three-inch gap, and below it you can feel cold air coming from below. Do I try and, like reach through the to get to the cold air? It's only three inches I can't get through, right? You can absolutely so reach through, though. I could try, let me try and reach through. So, the mystery uh, hole. <laughs> <laughs> What's in there? <laughs> you are also, oh, sorry, Ailey, you are also lying in total darkness. The floor below you is cold as ice. No, it is ice. A frozen stream. You reach out into the darkness, and to your horror, your hand touches another hand above you, reaching down, grasping. It's Graham. 
Do either of you have any way of making light, or can either of you see in darkness? <laughs> that is a no from me. <laughs> My uh, Hellfire Greatsword gives me light for about five feet because it emits like a fire glow. And uh, I think I also can see anything, I think it's uh, anything within 10 feet of me, even in blind or darkness. Oh, wow. Okay, so the Hellfire Greatsword ignites with this sort of dull, smoky glow. And you are in a circular passageway, only three foot in diameter. It continues one way and behind you. Below you is this frozen stream, and above you is this thin crevasse. And through it, maybe six inches, 12 inches above, Graham is reaching out, arms fully extended, touching your hand. I give him a high five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, does it look breakable? Um, like somehow I can help him out? Um, if you have something like a stone shaped spell, um, or if you want to spend a few hours sort of smashing away at this stone, then possibly. Otherwise, you are very close, but it may as well be a mile in terms of how you can get together. Um, okay. Um, Ailey, Hello, you're... stranger. <laughs> um, sorry for touching your hand there. Um, uh, do you think you'd get me out? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have a sense of humor. Um, yeah. Uh, I seem to be a bit stuck. Um, my name is Graham, and um, yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I suppose it's a pleasure. I am Ailey. Well, pleased to meet you, Ailey. Um, how about I try and climb upwards to see uh, if I can if I can go anywhere? I can't see very far. I can see only what's below me because of your very impressive mm. sword. Um, but I'm, I'm going to try and climb up. You see if you can find my friends. Uh, one is called Zalfis, and the other one is called Gon. I will look. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm trying to <laughs> climb up. So you're, so the passageway, I mean, obviously it's much, much thinner at its base ground, but it does mm -hmm. continue parallel to the one below. So you can walk for some way along with Ailey, although above her. Yeah, yeah. I'll follow the light then. Um, I'm the other slow. option is you could try and climb up up like it just disappears into complete darkness above you you don't know how high well i was going to try the up up first um, okay. i'm assuming i'll still be able to see the light below uh, sort of faintly yeah. for anyone else climbing freezing cold icy wet passageways would be almost impossible but obviously with the magic of your ring you can just mm -hmm. place a hand on holds of nothingness and clamber up into darkness mm. How high do you want to go? High as you'll let me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Ailey, uh, obviously he disappears from sight. I realized I do? could help him. Okay. I realized I could help him very late. Um, okay. But I'm going to cast uh, Daylight. Because um, I can cast it up to a point I see in 60 feet. And since he's directly above me to that sliver, I can cast it in the area that he's in. Okay. So what does this look like as it illuminates the chamber above? Um, yeah, it, just a small little circle, like the sun comes <laughs> rising up uh, behind Graham and kind of floats next to him. I'm, I'm, I'm about, imagine, 30 feet up, 40 feet up now. I'm like, I hope that's you, Ailey. If not, I think we might be in a spot of trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> So right. the, now that you can see where you are, mm -hmm. it's a huge cavern. And Ooh. to one side, I guess probably the direction Ailey's, Ailey's heading in, the, there is a, a passageway, but about 30 feet up. It looks like maybe where water has cut a tunnel in the bare living rock. And you can disappear off in that direction if you wish. Ailey, for you, the passage is heading down, not up, away from Graham. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll search up okay 
So as you two head off in separate directions into darkness and Graham, you will be soon heading into complete blackness on your own. Yep. Let's switch the camera to our other two heroes. As you burst from the door of light, you are faced with a horrendous sight. You are hundreds, hundreds of feet above the spine of the world mountains. The wind is buffeting you from all directions and below you, you can see snow-capped mountains reaching up through the clouds that have been cast by the frost maiden Uriel. You're falling, but you realize you're not falling at speed, you're falling, you're floating. And you're floating down towards a cliff, a huge gray cliff and cut into the living rock is an enormous fortress. It must be hundreds of feet high, gazing out across an enormous chasm. It's gray stone that is featureless apart from hundreds of tiny arrow slits. To the left, you see a path a snow-covered path worming its way along the edge of the cliff until it reaches a winding staircase that zigzags to and forth to a large stone gate built into the side of this fortress, for that is what it is. But right now you are floating down and you realise you have some control over your descent. Gone is getting <clears throat> some serious flashbacks right now <laughs> of falling to his death. <laughs> um, uh, Argon, what, uh, what? You know the deal. What is this place? I'm a spider right now. <laughs> okay. I do not reply. You cannot talk in this form, can you? <laughs> I arms, tr arms try arms to like, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh no, it became a background there. Argon's like spider form shrug. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get out of spider form because... I cannot I reply. Be, I'd have for you to stay in that form if you want, because I don't think you're going to have much to tell me anyway, are you? No, I'm basically going to try to like move towards uh, Zalfiz and and. <laughs> grab I'm assuming him. so. Like so, myself and Gone are falling slowly. I'm assuming my now um, animated bag folding and Lady Penguin are also falling beside us, right? Yeah, although there's you have some control. It's like you're bound together, like. The, the broken shards of the spell is somehow holding part of your group as as, as together. Um, so if anyone Rhyme has Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, there is an amazing image of this fortress. I actually tweeted it today. So if you check out either the uh, at Does It Roll or at How We Roll Podcast or at Joe the GM, you can see a picture of this fortress. It's just so awesome. Or at How um, We Roll All at the same time. Just plug it up. <laughs> wow, yeah, um, that's awesome. Can I, uh, can I look kind of so... We've seen this kind of fortress with a crazy gate and like mm. crazy mountains and stuff. Is there any movement or people or weapons aimed at? Like, is there anything I need to be worried about? As you descend down through the snow, I mean, it's 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 evening, so evening for Ten Towns is almost completely pitch black, and it's only the the reflections of um, the sort of hazy light off the bright snow that means that you can see this thing. You are probably invisible with the falling snow right now. It would take someone with amazing perception to see you and to expect people to be falling out of the sky. And, and just, just so I'm aware, <laughs> the spine of the world is where we saw the dragon on the map, right? Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Um, cool. I'm going to look for like a, a safe, soft area to land in, like secluded near the fortress, but like a giant snow drift or something that we know is not going to... If we get this wrong or the spell breaks, we're not just going to mash ourselves into spiky rocks. You do seem to have a surprising amount of control and you do manage to float yourselves down to a slightly hidden dell or slightly hidden corner along this path that winds through the mountains towards this, this straight stair, which turns into a winding stair heading up towards the fortress gates. Um, I turn to Gun and kind of just like, look at him and shrug to say like do we like do we go this way like wh what are you thinking um <laughs> I, I you, will... you either move forward or not basically to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like basically this. the spider starts I, I start moving towards the uh to the, towards the fortress but like while staying hidden the the spider that i actually am is like an ice spider too so it's like it, it's like blends in with the surroundings self so. is is going to 
like follow him, but at a like fifteen foot, twenty foot distance, because he assumes if any sort of not crazy person sees a giant ice spider walking towards him, they're probably going to initially run. So like it gives <laughs> me some bit of cover. Okay. Um. So you reach the base of these stairs, and they are slightly lower than the average staircase. So. Um, enough that if you want to start walking up them, you're going to kind of feel off balance. Although maybe Zalfis won't. This is sort of maybe a bit more similar to home. Finally, um, but accessibility. It, <laughs> it is going to be a a long climb. Um, so I, the spider I am is a large beast. I kind of indicate for Zalfis to climb on my back. I want to climb up the wall. That will definitely take a shortcut. Um, it, do, it still takes a significant amount of time. How long can you stay in beast shape for? Uh, an hour. You'll oh wait, still no. Uh, B shape is. It might be an hour. You go Watch. on anyway. It's at least an hour anyway. So okay. uh, three so hours. You finally reach the top of the staircase, which sh stops at the entrance to the fortress. A ten foot high double door of featureless stone stands in front of you. To its right, on the kind of like at, at right and ang angles to it, there is an arrow slit facing your direction as you squint through the darkness and snow you do see a flickering light from behind the arrow slits although there's no shadow that would hint that someone is watching hmm i've got dark vision as a spider can i see anything else in there i also have dark vision it's pretty high up so you'd actually like if you think that you're on the ground and quite far away, this this is about thirty foot up. This uh, oh sorry, I thought that was the right. This arrow slit. That's, that's fine. I can climb up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Going> all <laughs> the way up. <laughs> the advantage of being a spider, right? So you inch your way, footstep over footstep, over this frozen wall until you reach the arrow slit and gaze into the room beyond. It appears to be a guard room two doors exit it and there's a burning brazier which fills the room with a dull orange glow the fortress stinks of smoke and in fact the room has a haze lying on the floor face down in a pool of blood is an armored grey dwarf he's dead ah. Zelf is you're on the ground Far away, unless you're oh, I thought I might, well. am I not on his back? Not the whole yeah, thing I, oh, oh no, absolutely. Then you can see this as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think he's... Oh, sorry. There is also a, a like a, a there's a, there's a couple of other strange things in here. Probably One important. is an enormous. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot oh, about oh, this oh, other oh. stuff too. Oh, there's, there's there's some other bits in here. Yeah, as well. just so, completely innocuous bookshelf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the far side of the room, just in front of the doors, is a what looks to be a elevator, uh, a mechanical contraption, which goes down into the ground and up into the ceiling. There is also a lever by the elevator, which presumably controls that mechanism. But on the wall near the window, there is also another extremely large lever, presumably controlling the doors to the fortress. Uh, hmm. so just, just stop for a second, Gran. And like as he pulls up, um, I'm going to cast Mage Hand. Ooh, nice. Inside Very the room. Good. Okay, on the which which lever would you like to? Uh, control and, and, and the one oh god it, it'd be hilarious if the wall just fell away but the one that's not the elevator one that the, the, the <laughs> unmarked one that could be rocks fall you all die or hey congratulations you did a good thing i would be very surprised if this lever specifically dropped rocks outside the window <laughs> <laughs> you say that but no <laughs> yeah it'd be a good very anti very weapon. specific trap <laughs> yeah <laughs> anti-spider uh, yeah, anti-spider <laughs> Okay, so your your mage hand can do five pounds of force, can't it? So it is, yeah. you initially use the power of your mind to pull the lever, and nothing happens. But then Ten you pounds. realize that help. Uh, well, you realize that it's got a lock on it, so it's got a thing where you have to squeeze the handle before you can pull the lever. It's childproof, basically. Oh, it's out of the screws. <laughs> <laughs> so is it? It's just yeah. 10 pounds of pressure won't do it then, no? Um, I, th I think you probably can. Now that you realize how it works, you apply the pressure, you kind of like squint as you apply, you just 
apply that mental energy and the lever pulls there's a grinding noise there's gears that churn and turn from inside the fortress and with an inrush of air the enormous doors fall open meanwhile somewhere else deep deep underground graham has reached a tunnel leading up into darkness and ailey you have sort of striding along the the frozen river you have a choice you can either turn left and sort of stay at this level or you can go down and follow the limb almost sort of slide down the river uh, at some speed logically i should stay at this level but <laughs> um <laughs> i think though <laughs> yeah i think she'll slide she'll slide okay so you you initially try and control your speed you kind of use your two hands braced against the wall but you slowly gather momentum and I need you to give me a athletics or acrobatics check to see if you can keep control. Alrighty. Fingers crossed. Click and drag. Oh my god. I've never used the three dudes. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no though. <laughs> Oh, was that right. a one? <laughs> Am I dead? Uh, <laughs> Silly. So with a one, your fingers just slip and you grasp again, trying to hold on to the frozen wall. And no, you start flying down, going faster and faster and faster into darkness. Graham, um, you might hear a sort of a shout from below, but you're probably too far to, to pick that up. But the the sun like Ailey, is that you? The, the daylight spell winks <laughs> out the um, you <laughs> will have an adventurer's kit that's standard for for heroes and within the adventurer's kit there will be torches so um, unless I'm feeling particularly mean which I'm not you you can if you wish use a sort of tinder box to spark up a, a smoking torch yeah I'll, I'll definitely uh, light up the torch and take a look around so I've gone up from the cavern right yeah yeah and I can, I'm guessing it's just more cavern. And I'm kind of at this point, I'm using the ring, uh, or not the ring, the uh, earring. But I can just, I just walk up. Walls, so you've reached basically. where um, probably, I mean, bef before everything froze in Icewind Dale, this would have been where the stream or river would have entered the caverns. There's a circular tunnel at the edge of mm -hmm. the cavern, about thirty feet up, yeah. um, where you've now climbed up to, and it's di it disappears. This tunnel into darkness. Well, I've got my torch. I'll just keep walking down and see what I see. Okay, so you you go for not too long. I mean, the fact that you've got this magical earring which allows you to spider climb along the walls. Mm -hmm. There's a few kind of like scary moments where um, there isn't anything obvious to hold on to and you're just sticking <laughs> onto pure ice. Um, but eventually... It's the mist step, yeah. <laughs> the, the tunnel has a, a hole to one side. And it looks out upon an enormous chasm. And below you, directly below you, is a ledge. Now, this is a large ledge, probably like 50 foot, um, sticking out into the chasm. Mm -hmm. And on it is a curious sight. Three grey dwarves are backing against, at first, what seems to be, and I'm going to get this wrong, I'm going to say a stalagmite, one of the ones that come up from the ground. No, that's dead race. Is that right? Tight. Yeah. Hang on tight from the ceiling. Might okay. from the ground. Is okay, so stalagmite. There we go. Um, <laughs> learned, that, learned that in primary school. Stuck with me for my life. Um, but it's it's it must be a 15-foot high um, stalagmite coming up from the ground, but it has a central burning eye and a sticky web, uh, like a, a tendril, has shot out and has grabbed one of the grey dwarves and is pulling it towards a gruesome mouth. And they're shouting and screaming as they attack this thing. Wow. Glad I'm not them. And then I continue. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So as you're about to continue, you hear a scream as Kaylee flies out of a, <laughs> of, of a nearby hole 
on a, a blanket of ice and stops in the middle of this 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 uh, area in front of the Grey Dwarfs. Now, Kaylee, you're like, I don't know, 30 feet away from them, and they don't seem to be paying you a great deal of attention. They're far too concerned with this roper, but this horrendous creature has spotted you. And I'd like you all to roll me initiative, please. Well, the two of you. All right. <laughs> um, uh, Graham, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll do that. Just gonna add my little plus eight there. Alertness. 25. Bloody hell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kaylee? Yeah. 25. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Hey, Owen, uh, we, we, we're just here that's... rolling ones. Amy was the highest I'd ever rolled on this show in the 10, seat, or 10 episodes we've done. I would say narratively, it makes no sense that I could react to Wait, Amy I think I falling rolled wrong. faster than she would. <laughs> I rolled with the plus seven, which is my athletics. I have zero okay. decks. Just kidding. Let me do that again for you. <laughs> seven, as it should be. Okay. <laughs> seven. Okay, so Graham, you're absolutely going to go first, and you've got a surprise round if you wish to attack anyone. So I'm, I'm 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 up above, looking down, yeah. and I can see this all this, happening. Yeah. Uh, and initially, I was going to leave, but then I see Ailey sliding through the tunnel, uh, just pops out of the mouth of this tunnel. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I was going to leave, and I'm like, oh crap. Um, Let, okay. Now I need to. Uh, I, I'm going to get involved. So I uh, I decide to attack the giant creature thing. I'm just going to try to ignore the dwarves for the time being so they don't seem to actually be a threat. Okay, uh, nice. Um, you can roll with sneak attack because it is in combat and there's there's sort of you're fighting you know, the, 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 what is it, yeah. the enemy <laughs> of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> We're going to go yeah. with it. Okay, so uh, give me that attack roll against It's called a roper. A roper? Yeah. Okay. So I'll try to get really, really close and attack with the rapier. And I don't, I I don't, oh no no sorry if you're if you want to dive down that's gonna be a completely different thing if you're gonna attack oh. at range you can do it if you want to use your crossbow ah. that's fine okay well I'm, I, I would be the same roll anyway okay. so what, did you uh, get? like I rolled 13 at 30 let me just check the rapers uh AC uh absolutely not your um bolt hits into it and it's like you just hit an actual stalagmite it just pings off into the darkness <sighs> absolutely not got through its armor um, let me do some initiatives for the Durigar and the Roper. So the Roper um, gets, oh gosh, a five. And the Durigar, there's three members of this Durigar party. Um, don't do much better with an eight. So now it's the actual rounds. Um, Graham, what would you like to do with your actual round, not your surprise round? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to actually go down there because I'm, I'm more effective. Um, okay, nice. And I can actually attack myself so i'm um, used to get as far as close as i can and then perhaps uh, so i've used all that movement and uh, i'll try and attack with the crossbow again um but from closer i guess okay so you're going to be kind of like near ailey yes that give you that roll <laughs> see what we're looking at 13 again okay that's this is really poor. not a hit <laughs> just pings off. Um, yeah. uh, Ailey, like, it's your what go. is this thing made of? <laughs> um, I see Graham, and I want to be like, hello. But Hi again. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I immediately charge, because uh, I have no self-preservation. Nice. Okay, are you going to attack the Duragar, or are you going to attack the Roper? I'm going to attack the Roper, because that's who Graham was attacking. And so I think nice. they will follow suit um, nine no <laughs> nine's not gonna cut it you get a second attack though it do <laughs> 18 nice. 18 is actually not gonna cut it your hellfire what? greatsword crashes into this stone abomination and just bounces off like you're hitting living rock itself the roper it's not its go. The two Duragar, uh, three Duragar attempt to attack. You realize that they have blades that are lined with Chardalin, you know, the, the black ice, mm. and it seems to be effective against this creature. Let's mm. see how they do. I'm going to roll all three at once, if that's okay. It's going to look messy. Let's go. It is going to look messy. <laughs> um, 
Ooh. Ooh, one hits. One manages to do damage against this thing, and it cuts deep into it. Is it going to roll for me? There we go. Um, doing six points of damage. Um, do either of you speak under common? No. No, then they, they, they kind of like say something going, and crash into it. But again, you don't hear or understand what they say. I make the similar Roper. sounding noises back at them. <laughs> um, yes. Flies out. The, like, exactly. It has these like lumps on it, which at first you thought were maybe just like rock formations, but they, they fire out sticky tendrils and fly towards you. Um, let's go on the Duragar first. The first one strikes against, still doesn't strike against the Duragari, bats it aside with it rolled a two. <laughs> no. Um, the second one. <laughs> uh, oh, the second Duragar bats it aside again with a six. Um, where are we? So it gets a plus seven on this. Um, uh, this one's towards you, Kaylee. It rolls a natural oh my one. God. The sticky Joe. tendril. It's a killer Hits self. The floor against you. <laughs> And uh, the last tendril on um, gone seventeen. Not gone, Graham. Oh, sorry, Graham. Seventeen. Oh, right. That's not good. Okay, <laughs> okay. So this tendril strikes against you. This strange stony tentacle, and it sticks hard like an octopus sucker, and you feel yourself being drawn towards it. <laughs> um, it's top of the round. A uh, Graham. That's, yeah, great. Right. Um, so I, I take out my rapier as it pulls me towards it, and I try and stab it straight in the central mass. Um, and hopefully this time I don't roll poorly. You, you try, but when you try and lift your hand, you feel that you've got no energy. The sticky substance seems to be draining away your very strength. I need you to give me a strength save. That's strength good. save? Yeah. I have minus um, one strength, by the way. That's a ten. Sorry, ignore the six because I thought I was. Be I, I do apologise. You can give me a dexterity, um, acrobatics, or uh, athletics instead, if you wish. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll do acrobatics then because that's broken. So give me a moment. <laughs> uh, that's a twenty. Dirty Absolutely. 20. You manage to kind of spin <laughs> into a spin and twist in a way that the tentacle rips away from you, taking part of your clothing with it, tearing <laughs> away the warm fibres, and now you can attack. Now I can attack. Okay. Yeah. That was very, very nasty. You should consider yourself a very bold tentacle <laughs> thing. And then I go and attack it with a nine. So again, it, I, I shoot my crossbow, pings off it, nothing's happening. I'm like, can I not? What is your weapon made of? <laughs> Weird dwarf thing. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Ailey. Um. I am going to move until I can get closer to Graham uh, and as well as tack the same thing so that next time the poor nice. man doesn't get picked up. <laughs> um, Eleven. Eleven's She's not, not doing do so hot. <laughs> we, we're, uh, we're just very poor on the damage front. And your, your second attack? <laughs> 24. Ooh. That will do it. That is absolutely a hit. Do you wish to <laughs> smite? Too soon. Um, yes, why not? I haven't used it. We'll try it. What level spell are you going to use with your smite? Um, probably level two. Okay, so that's, and it's, I think it's 2d8, and it, for each one above, you get an additional d8, so that's an additional 3d8 damage? Yes. So I'll roll mm -hmm. the damage first, um, which is plus four, so seven. And seven. then for smite, it's a 3d8? Yep. That's right. 13 Ooh. radiant damage. Oh, that is very, very nice. So 20 points of damage. You shear into it and green blood sprays out in all direction and it lets out an ear-piercing scream which somehow seems to hit frequencies that damage your eardrums and you find yourself stumbling back, as do the grey dwarves. Um, but they still manage to gird themselves and launch themselves forward into attack. Um, and one of them does manage to hit his Chardolin axe, cutting deep into the Roper again, doing another nine points of damage. The Roper, not to be uh, not to be outdone, is going to attack back. So it's going to attack. In fact, I'm just going to roll all at once. Um, okay, what's this one? It rolls a one. <laughs> <laughs> on, on what you, is Ailey. going on? Um, 
okay. Oh, 17 on the first dwarf, um, which it tugs towards its mouth. Now, because it's so close, it's going to get a bite attack. Uh, second one misses. Uh, sorry, third one misses. And another, another one. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, however, the bite attack <laughs> is incredibly deadly. It drags this Duragar towards its mouth. And I just want to make sure I get this right, because it does do a ton of damage on its bite attack. Yeah, 48 plus 4 damage. Um, it chomps down on this poor Duragar doing... Oh, oh my gosh. God, Joe. <laughs> 36 <laughs> points of damage, biting oh. the poor the poor dwarf in two. You're all sprayed with blood. The other two Duragar say something like, oh, God, ah! and they both turn around and run for a side passageway. I can actually translate that. They said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> can I try and slide a hand one of their swords? Uh, no, you can't. No, that, Damn it. That, that's not part of what you can do don't, with don't uh, break his your fast hands. <laughs> um, the question is, do you wish to try and continue fighting this abomination or do you want to make a hasty escape with the two Duraga? I think we should run. Yeah, yeah, okay. We're, uh, I'm going to leave now because I am covered in blood. <laughs> um, otherwise, good I say, otherwise, I said fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, my will to fight is gone. Ooh, where did it go? <laughs> okay. Well, oh, let's, no. The <laughs> rover is like, why are these guys so sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> well, let us move our camera back to the fortress of Sunblight, where Zelfers and Gone have just opened the enormous stone doors and are staring against. A short corridor, probably only 30 foot long, 10 foot high, grey stone, expertly hewn, but again filled with this dark, smoky radiance. Can I ask both of you to give me a quick perception roll as you step into the darkness? Not oh, man, how's the spider roll perception? Let's see. <laughs> uh, perception, all right, I'll roll first. Uh, 23. I'm wow. mega alert, apparently. Nice. Oh, now this other guy will wake you up. Mine's just a, a just a base twenty. You have eight eyes. Should you get an advantage? <laughs> no, spiders don't. <laughs> apparently, I get a nine. No, so gone. You don't notice anything, but Zalfir, you notice two things. First of all, about halfway along the corridor, on the left-hand wall, is another arrow slit, and there's from there the sound of. If you didn't know any better, you'd think it was like maybe bear baiting. It sounds like people cheering something, um, but it sounds vicious. Um, below the <laughs> I love below how the arrow slits, like, vicious I like cheering. I, I love how I got that in my sound library. What's that sound like? Vicious cheering, bear baiting. Definitely not dog fighting. More yeah. bear baiting. <laughs> it's like a like a sort of Millwall football match. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a reference for all those UK fans. <laughs> So, but the other thing you notice it's in the darkness of the corridor is a figure slumped against the wall right underneath the arrow slit another Duragar in a pool of blood he's dressed in scale mail armor and on his chest is like an insignia and it looks like a black um, crown with nine points uh and there, there's, there's another one of these um, uh, dead dwarves here again, and I don't know what's happening, but there's there's something going on down. Well, they actually know exactly what's happening, but there's something going on down that corridor to the the slit. So these this is like only sort of be... thirty foot long. The doors on the other side. I probably didn't. There's doors at the other side, <laughs> lead further okay. into the complex. But on the left hand wall, there's an arrow slit, like. Looking with no door to no door, no, 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 it's just an arrow slit okay. like a, a murder hole, so that anyone coming along this corridor could get noticed and shot. Gone so, is yeah, going to an to, internal room. Gone's going to drop out of spider shape, uh, my wild shape. And, I guess um, makes roleplay a lot easier, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be like, Okay, um, hold on, can you wait here for, for just a second? And he's going to just pick up a handful of dirt or dust off the ground and cast that uh, pass without a trace. The two of oh, us. Yeah because sneaky is good. And then he's going to say, sounds like people might be baiting a bear down there. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, I'll cast uh, Pass with Better Trace to give us plus 10 on our stealth checks. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll let Zalfiz lead the way because he seems to be more perceptive than I am. Yeah, so the door, you said there's doors at the other end of the hall. What, yeah. This, how many, what, what number is doors? How many doors? So doors as in like a pair of doors that would oh, open double doors. together. Yeah, okay. like double doors, yeah. I guess we're going to walk towards... Well, actually, can I check if there's any clues or evidence of how this dwarf died or if he has anything? Like a key would be very handy. So you you want to sort of search him? Yeah. Um, Loot the so body. You kind of, the first thing you notice is that his throat has been slit. Slit. Okay. So not ripped um, out. The second thing you notice, um, <laughs> and this is just sort of because you're all kind of like you're level six now, you're... you're well used to combat this doesn't seem like he was expecting it this seems like either this was a stealth kill or it was someone he knew had killed him okay the second thing you notice is there is a sound coming from the room beyond the arrow set which sounds familiar <laughs> Familiar. It sounds, what, 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 it sounds what like. Please, please, oh, you don't, I really don't want to fight. Please, just let me go. I'm, oh no, I'm, it's nimsy. I'm, I'm the town speaker. I can pay you lots of money. Please, just let me go. And then all the people around it go. Rah, 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 unless any of you speak undercover. Uh, or, no. I speak dwarvish. Dwarvish won't do it. It's undercover. Nah. Uh, Gone just hears nimsy and basically just charges and breaks the door open if possible. Uh, so this is coming from the arrow slit. Oh, oh okay. Jesus God. You know, break open the arrow slit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm mean, that wall. You're tall enough. <laughs> you can probably just <laughs> see through the arrow slit if you wish. Yeah, we'll um, go to see. Beyond is an enormous guard room. There are probably 12 grey dwarves surrounding poor Nimbly, who's been given a dagger and he's facing off against a kobold who also doesn't seem that keen to fight. But the kobold is wielding like a flail, who is, which is swinging it round. So, Joe, I have, I have a question. A, ba a bag of holding, you know, like it can hold loads of stuff, right? Sure. But I, I always assumed it, it's like an empty, like when you press against it, then does it feel like it's a full bag or is it an empty bag? So it opens into an extra dimensional space so that it feels just like a bag unless you pull, like, reach an arm into it. Okay, so can my homunculus servant, which is my reanimated bag, um, I could basically talk to him and ask him to fly in try and pick up Nimsy, who I'm pretty sure is a halfling, so he's small anyway. And fly back um, out. Uh, fly through the arrow slit? <laughs> You're going to so mash him through it? It's, no, it's a fantastic that's plan. Asking, that's why I'm asking just if... Two if minor in. problems. <laughs> so first of all, you don't think Nimbly, uh, Nimsy could fit through the arrow slit. In fact, you know he can't. Um, he is far too um, well-fed um, to do so. And secondly, the homunculus is too, isn't, isn't strong enough to carry a person. Well, if, if maybe Zalfis is looking at his hands and he sees no, my, my whole, that he's my got a was... ring of the ram. Sorry. The... <laughs> Wait, point of order. I'm sorry. If the bag is an extra extra dimensional a space and it's just a bag, that it yes. wouldn't have any weight and wouldn't have any space and it would be easy to carry in and out because it's just a bag. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm done now. I think okay. it's a genius idea too. But okay. Thank you, disembodied voice. <laughs> okay, sorry. I, I completely misunderstood what you were trying to do. So you want to put him in the bag? Yes, in the bag. He doesn't breathe, right? Oh, that might be a problem. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure sorry. there's a rule against putting living things in the bag of holding. So, there's no rule oxygen. against it. It, do, it. it does kill them, I think, yeah. Well, no, <laughs> so the, the rule is, is normally a bag of holding is five inches in diameter, so they have to be able to get in there. But I feel like this is quite fun. Why not? Why you Maybe you've created a sack of holding. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, 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 I thought it looked up specifically. It's a two foot diameter, but okay. Uh, yeah, can we, okay. I don't mind. Like, okay. And before you do this, because obviously there's going to be consequences of flying something into a room filled with twelve uh, Duragar guards. Have you got a kind of end game in plan, or should we just see how it pans out? Oh no, and that's how this passed. I don't want to see Nimsy die because he seems like a good dude. Nimsy's good shit. Are you, are I mean, really don't want to fight you. I just tried to walk into the room. Doesn't have a door. To be fair, so neither of us were thinking this true. I didn't know it wasn't. Th I thought it was through the door. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Anyway, go on with your plan. So, so go on my genius plan. Uh, like, uh, I don't have a name for my bag. So, I, bag. I need you to go in there and um, pick up uh, Nimsy. The, the little little. He's a halfling, right? 
the little halfling, the one that looks really scared, and fly him back out. Try not to be seen. Gone is just watching Zalfis talk to a bag. <laughs> it understands my language. I got among the servant up here. Like it definitely, there's nothing here that, so far that doesn't. So this, am I getting this right? So the homunculus, this sort of gargoyle-looking stony creature, is going to climb out of the bag, fly the bag. No, 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 no. Uh, your homunculus servant, you pick an object, and your homunculus servant forms around that bag. Yeah, it actually doesn't work, does it? Now that I realize it doesn't work because you make it construct around the bag. So, I, I mean, you can have it. him, like, carry the bag, you know, fly the bag across the room, drop the bag over Nimsy, and, and fly back. I yeah. feel that we've devoted, <laughs> devoted quite a lot Too of time much to this not plan to now. For not to do it. Not <laughs> <laughs> the back out of it. Yeah, that's what we're going to do, and sure, why not? He's a, sm- <laughs> okay. he's a small little flying uh, owl. They will change They're, they're like, well, no, homunculi ally, like, little sort of, they're little people. Like, that's um, how they, they, they they're describe it. They're tiny constructs. You can take any form you want. Oh, okay, I, I, I'm sorry. For, so what, for what example, homunculi. Oh my like? god! <laughs> it does look like a small owl. <laughs> okay, a small, a small, a, like it's, it's maybe like a sort of steampunky type owl. No, anyway. the, the way it's done is I cast homunculi servant onto my bag. The body of the owl is the bag, and the opening is at the bottom of the owl. So it's going to go land on this guy. Bag closes. <laughs> pick him up. Like, like, like a chinook chopper. There we go. That'll do. A tiny chinook chopper. How's that? So it's, it's this sort of, this is going to go over and sit on him, basically. <laughs> yeah, which is an image. <laughs> okay, so, so, so give me a stealth check for the oh, um, no. homunculi. Oh, it gets plus two dex. That's not a terrible hook. Okay. <laughs> uh, where the heck is my... Uh-oh. It's not rolling for me for some reason. Let's try it again. D20 plus 2. 16. Nice. Okay, well, let's... Um, I'm not going to roll for each of the dwarves individually. I will just give a roll, and we'll see how they get on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I said it earlier, he's saving all of his good rolls for us, Owen. <laughs> so, the, the, with a nat 20, the owl enters the room, and it starts sort of flapping across with these sort of whirring wings. And one of the guards sort of looks up and goes, and um, pulls out his crossbow and and takes a shot at this this homunculi. Um, with a four plus three, I'm assuming that a seven is a miss. It's a miss, um, yeah. The, but quite a few of the guards are sort of looking at this robot owl. They didn't seem like threatened or particularly worried by it. In fact, they seem to think that it's to do with Nim- Nimsy and they're each pulling out crossbows to uh, to take pot shots at it. What do you wish to do? Can I... I'm going to chant something here. Can I shout in Dwarvish and like... So like, I'm going to kind of nudge God to like, get out of the window so he can't see it, but shout in Dwarvish and basically try and deceive them. Uh, I'm not sure my dwarvish accent sounds as uh, as Alphys, but uh, you're all you're all surrounded. You, Nimsy, uh, we are the guard of Lonely Wood. We've come to rescue rescue him. Don't, don't harm him, and you'll all live. Nimsy goes, "Oh, thank God, my God's here! I don't know how the hell I hear him. Oh, thank God!" And he just drops his dagger, and the kobold oh. rushes <clears throat> forward to just like poke him with the sword. Um, I need you to give me an intimidate roll. <laughs> Intimidate roll. Him. Oh, that's also plus God one. That, that, that works. Uh, what do you mean I'm going to kill him? I'm saving him. The kobold's going to kill him. <laughs> um, with a plus one, I got 14. 14. They don't seem massively intimidated, to be fair. However, the sort of the three that had sort of broken off to um, attack this owl pick up their weapons and head off out of your sight and presumably in your direction. One more starts heading in your direction, holding his crossbow in the direction of the arrow slit. He's about 10 feet away. He's going to be on you, looking out at you any moment. What do you want to do? I've got to move if you don't want, if you don't get that straight off, off the top of your head now. Um, I'll let you go. I'll let, I'll let you take <laughs> It's going so well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> just the room again, sorry. Is it like... How large is the room? Um, the guard room, um, it's probably about 10 foot wide. So from where you are, it's 10 foot to the following wall. But then it goes 
um, out to your right into darkness for a long way. You're not sure how far. And how, like, are the guards surrounding where Mimsy is, or are they off to the side? Um, they've formed a circle around Mimsy, which is about 15 That's feet what away. I'm afraid of. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll, 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 I'll let Selfish take the lead. So at this point, we realize that that's, we're, we're watching, it's not happening. I'm going to kind of nod to God and to like, just hold me so I can see what's happening. And, uh, sorry, God, we're going to fight now, but I'm going to cast Scorching Ray on the three guys running for the door. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So as, um, Zalfiz and Gon decide to engage 12, um, <laughs> Turika in their fortress, we're going to move the com the, uh, the camera back to alien. Craig. I really thought we'd be able to save him and get out with them around fighting now. I may have ruined mm -hmm. our day. Um, uh, as I, they... I've got to move. I've got to move. Okay. As they run through the darkness, um, alongside the two Durga, um, a minute or two goes by and they stop and they turn around and one of them says to you, do you understand Undercommon? Um, no. <laughs> do you have any alliances to the Eve Uh, no. Good. And he just buries his axe in his companion's head. It's a what? spray of blood <laughs> and he drops the ground. They both gasp. <laughs> <gasps> Treachery. <laughs> Come <I'm> on. Like... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Lee? Is that Lee? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Lee vibes. <laughs> no. Mm. My name is Dagar of the Muzgarat clan. And he points to his chest where you see a foaming mug of ale on an insignia um, is proudly displayed. Mm -hmm. Well, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> I guess. He was shaking his hand after he asked <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah, hand up. My name is Graham, and um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is Ailey. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> sure, Do you know where we can go uh, to get out of here? We're kind of, we're, we're lost, very lost. Well, you are both obviously very capable in combat. You oh, challenged no. a roper, which not many people would dare do. And you may have saved my life and myself as heir apparent to the Mosgarrett clan. Owe you my life and a favor. But maybe, yes, maybe we can do each other a favor. What do I you have in mind? I can show you a way out. But... <laughs> You mm -hmm. must help me defeat these scum. Sunblight clan. Okay, Sunblight clan. You see that he's pointing at this, this grey dwarf, which has another insignia on his chest, which seems to be a crown. Okay, so you were, you were fighting this thing together because you were interrupted, or...? Ah, well, the Sunblight clan, they're gathering creatures from the underdark <coughs> to attack the uh you know the the human towns the ten towns we have oh. no interest in these politics we just wish to return to the underdark can i insight check can i just narrow my eyes in the dark <laughs> yeah you absolutely <laughs> can like, mm. give me that insight check just those sounds, guys <laughs> sounds fun uh okay so plus three Fifteen. Fifteen. There's there's a lot going on here. He seems genuine when he he mentioned that the they're gathering creatures from the Underdark to attack Ten Towns. Um, about maybe giving him a favor. Mm, possibly true. Possibly not true. Like it. There's definitely some. There's two sides to what he's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't seem like filled with malice. Doesn't seem like he's going to suddenly start axing you. Okay. So. Um. Do you know if uh, this Sunbright clan or whatever they're called, um, did they attack Kaer Koenig? Yeah, they're forming sun. You're kind of walking along as he's doing this. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're king, Zadorak. He's, he's mad. He's, he's trying to marry my mother who has no interest at all. He's brought us up into this hell hole of the surface world 
And now we're trapped. We've been trapped here for two or two years, if you believe it. The ice has frozen our escape down into the depths. I believe it. <laughs> we are sick of his nonsense. Mm-hmm. We just wish to go home. But you may have arrived at a fortuitous time. We need a distraction. Let my mother tell you. Come, follow me. Okay. I'm going to meet your mother. Interesting character. Uh, <laughs> as we walk, I want to use a mind link with Graham. Uh, so you will hear um, Ailey's voice in your head being like, I don't trust this. I hope you know. And I'm like thinking to myself, this is a very weird experience. (laughs) So cozy in here. (laughs) (laughs) Lots of space. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Hello. Um, Yeah, yeah, we can chat briefly. Okay. No, I I don't really trust him, but I also don't know where I'm going. So uh, I'm assuming wherever his mother is... uh, might bring us closer to where my friends Zelthus and Gon are. So we are agreeing to help. For now. All right. One thing that you might have gathered from your insight check as well is he's not massively bright. Um, Graham that, or the dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> Probably Graham. <laughs> Hang on. Um, so he leads you through the darkness, a uh, twisting uh, sort of root of corridors, and you realize that if you were on your own, you would have been lost in this maze um, of the upper underdark or the upper dark for days. And eventually it stops by a stone wall, sheer stone, not like the living rock. This has obviously been hewn. And he looks at you both and goes, this leads into sunlight. Um... If I, if I lead you in like this, the you, you will be attacked and probably murdered. So we need to find the... Uh... Well, while he's saying this, I put on my hat of disguise and turn into a uh, dark dwarf or whatever. Grey dwarf. Grey yeah, dwarf, yeah. <laughs> that is a... Pretty clever huh? trick. Well yeah. done. Yeah. And he sort of gives you a slow clap. I am very impressed. Uh, Ailey is clapping tonight? as well. <laughs> yeah. Is Bor at the guy you just allied with? <laughs> very Bore. good. Very good. Nice, I like. nice. very good. I like. No, I, no oh. please don't get me started. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. A curse of Strahd memories all over. <laughs> so. Uh, you, you are a strong, tall knight. Uh, hmm, maybe, I know. And he reaches into his bag and he pulls out some manacles. Maybe you could be my prisoner. I, I'm in, in my mind, I'm just saying, I don't like this. If you can still <laughs> hear me. <laughs> I would prefer this the other way around. Uh, so I, I take off the hat and I'm like putting the hat on Ailey and then she becomes a grey dwarf. And then I'm like, how about you put the cuffs on me? Uh, sh- the manacles. Sure. Okay, that, we, we can do that if you Ailey wish. Ailey greatly approves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a rogue, so I can probably get out of this very easily. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and he doesn't actually, like, bind the cuffs. He just clips mm-hmm. them shut. And particularly yeah. with your sleight of hand, you have no problem in literally just twisting them off. Mm-hmm. Um now just be aware uh where we're going you will see some strange things don't react you're great dwarf Mm -hmm. you're strong you're brave you're not worried by the creatures of the underdark that you may see on your journey through the bowels of sunlight and um i'll take you to meet my mother and I think that's probably a really, really good time to take a 10 minute break. <laughs> so as Ailey and Graham <laughs> head into the depths of Sunblight and Zalfish and Gon get ready to battle <laughs> the 12 guards <laughs> at its entrance, uh, we will be back in 10 minutes. Um, we'll see you very, very soon for the epic conclusion to Rhyme of the Frost Maiden season one.
that kid would give it a lot of
nice. Welcome back to Rhyme with the Frost Maiden. And the scene that spreads out in front of us is a chaotic one. In a guard room, we have a whole bunch of grey dwarves who have been forcing Nimsy, the halfling speaker of Lonely Wood, to fight against a kobold. In the nearby room, separated by a murder hole, an arrow slit, Zalfiz and Gon watch on aghast at seeing their friend and one-time employer treated in this way. Unfortunately, due to their actions, the Grey Dwarves have been alerted to their presence and three guards are heading through a door into the room, or soon into the room where Zalfiz and Gon are hiding. But another Grey Dwarf is heading towards the arrow slit with his heavy crossbow in hand. Gon, Zalfiz, what do you want to do? So I think I'm going to pop up onto the window or the arrow slit again and just... Um shout at my uh, homunculus servant who I've called Owly because I'm very practical. <laughs> it's Owl-like, so Owly. <laughs> uh, Owly, you, you've got to save uh, Nimby, the, 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 the halfling. The... And then, like, I'm hoping Nimby's going to somehow wave at this bird thing to figure it out. And, like, basically uh, Owly's going to drop onto him, pick him up inside the bag, and head come out the window. Okay, so that's the plan, at least that's the hope. So as you shout that, Nimsy sort of looks up at this owl and goes, that's that's my rescue party! Lonely wood guards, you're crap! And but he starts like <laughs> jumping up and down as this kobold is running towards him and poking at him with this short sword. Uh, Gone, what are you going to do? Um, has Nimsy jumped up to the servant? He's trying. He's like jumping towards it, but it has it's like flapping towards him as some Duragar sort of resing their crossbows. Um, well, I want, to do, I want to hold an action until Nimsy gets in the bag, basically. Okay, okay. Well, okay, what we'll do is we'll have two of the Duragar again take a shot at this homunculus and we'll see what happens. Well, for, and... for the hold an action, do you have to call out what, you're, what like, oh, I do well, this I... when this? Yes, okay, so I can do that. Uh, basically, the second I see Nimsy is safe off the ground, I'm going to cast Erupting Earth in the whole room okay. and just blast everything in there and hopefully okay. damage the doors so they can't get out. Uh, a 15 and a 14. What's the homunculus' armor? Uh, 13. Okay, oh no, so that's two hit. hits. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let me make sure I'm pretty sure I learned that all. Uh-oh. So they do eight points of damage to the homunculus. Oh, one second. Sorry. Is that for closing what his hit points are, honey? Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. <laughs> You've got to have more than eight. Well, so. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> Uh, oh, come on, d, d Beyond. Here we go. We love you, d, &D Beyond, and Lauren. Yes, so no, much. we do, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do. It's my... Media <laughs> panic. It's definitely oh, d &D. my interest. <laughs> uh, hit points is one plus your intelligence modifier plus your artificial level, so that's one plus six plus my intelligence modifier. Oh, no, please be uh, more than two. Uh, that is... Four. We're good. So that's 11, 11 hit points. Woo. So it kind of like begins to spiral out of the air as the, the kind of like a sort of, you know, World War One biplane as it floats down, but it lands on top of Nimbly, opening up the sack of holding, and he just disappears inside as his scream is cut off. And gone. What the happens? second that Nimsy's off the ground and in the bag, gone, just stomps his foot and casts erupting earth in the room which is a 20 foot square basically that causes all the ground to start churning and just erupting and uh, they have to everyone in the room needs to make a DC of 15 dexterity save. Okay I'm not going to roll for all 13 of them but whether they pass or fail they're no longer going to be a pay paying attention to the the to Owly is that right? Owly yeah he's Owly oh. it's very practical Sorry. as a name. No, I get it and <laughs> <laughs> And, and he flaps, sort of trailing cogs and smoke towards the uh, the arrow slit and through. Um, are you letting Nimbly out? Uh, yeah, definitely. What do you get? Yeah, I'm not a monster. I'm a hero. <laughs> you live here now, Nimbly. <laughs> he drops out of the extra dimensional space and goes, <gasps> Oh my God, thank you so much. self has gone. Oh, thank God you're here. I thought you... I, I feel I've changed my voice into something completely different. Oh, you reckon? I'll be fine. Um, <laughs> uh, 
What's the plan? Where do, how do we get out? Uh, we're not necessarily Don't trying worry, to get out. Don't worry, we have a plan. <laughs> Uh, we're going through those <laughs> we're going through those doors he points to two closed doors <laughs> and we will yeah okay uh, so you run forward um luckily the doors are not are not locked and they burst out into a 10 foot by 10 foot corridor to your left is the guard room and the doors there are opening is the angry Duraga, who have been thrown off their feet by uh, Gon's mighty spell, are heading in your direction. I but watched the try right... to like, damage the door when I was like casting the spell to like just fuck up, it just destroy yeah. it basically. I can imagine that as the uh, as the Duraga are pulling out against the damaged hinges, it won't hold them for long though. These are strong, strong dwarves. But to your right, the um, the fortress opens out. There's a corridor going down and down and down into darkness with numerous doors and passageways disappearing off to the left and right. Um, can Gon cast Locate Object to look for the Black Ice Dragon? <laughs> Giant Ice Dragon? He yeah, knows what, he has an idea of what it is. He can yeah, yeah. cast Locate Object. <laughs> okay. yeah. It's just a, yeah. Do you it's need a to weird make a roll? Um, no, uh, I describe the object uh, that's familiar to me, and I sense the direction the object is in up to 1,000 feet. It is directly below you. Okay. We will look for stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically, do you want to take a corridor, or do you want to take a door as you run along? I will like Zalthus make the calls. <laughs> Why? They've gone so badly so far. <laughs> because um... Gon thinks you're smart. <laughs> So based Gone on what, not we, what, what, what we smart. saw on the map that I made back in... You, you're not going to get any information about that. It's basically going to be, as you run down this, this main corridor, the doors behind you will burst open. You can either d dive into a doorway, or you can dive down a corridor. Bro, let's go into the corridor. Like, I want to get deeper into the mountain, whichever seems deeper into the mountain. Like, is the door going to go into a room that's deeper into the mountain? Like, nice. Okay. So let's let's move the camera back over to where Graham and Ailey are following this very very trustworthy Duragar prince into the bowels <laughs> of Sunblight. Now, one thing we didn't didn't uh, discuss, Ailey, is when you donned uh, Graham's hat of disguise, you changed into a into a Duragar. Um, what does your Duragar look like? She has the typical kind of like dark gray skin um, and her white hair has remained. On top of her head, it's a close shave, but on uh, her chin and jaw is this beautiful white beard, somehow maintained uh, despite the kind of rough terrain. Like nice. when you transform the the Duragar It's just like prince. my hair went this way. <laughs> <laughs> he like he seems to blush for a moment and color comes into his cheeks and he sort of doesn't you know he seems a bit nervous around you. He's like so um right um let's uh, uh you come with me prisoner and he grabs onto your manacles Graham come on let's go and he leads you rather <laughs> more roughly than he needs to um through this door into the the fortress itself you are met with an enormous cavern it is lit with a fiery red glow and smoke fills it obscuring your vision to your right are cages constructed of metal and wood and there's a couple that seem to be constructed of hardened ice in each of the cages are strange creatures some you recognize and some you don't some are kind of like huddled in the bottom of the cages. Some are viciously trying to rend against them. And you pass by Duragar guards who seem to be, if anything, riling them up, poking them with spears and laughing at them as you go by. A few of the creatures you pass, uh, one is like this enormous beetle-like creature, which you may or may not recognize as an umber hulk. There are a few quagoths, these like white bear-like humanoids. There's some that you just don't know at all. You do see in a large icy cage is a mind flayer with its tentacles flayed off, staring out at the cavern blankly. 
As you approach what seems to be a metal lift at the far end of the cavern, two Duraga guards come up to you and they say, And they're looking at you, Ailey. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Um, Play it cool. This is in my head. <laughs> Ailey, stoically, nods. Um, and they and they they reach forward to grab onto Graham's manacles, and the the Durga who's leading you goes Gura, no, gra, no, gra. and they shake their heads and go again to grab onto your manacles, Graham. Okay, I'm just gonna move move my hands yeah. to the side. You'll just miss. <laughs> I'll step in front of him as well. Same, same rage. I mean, stoic rage. Because if they grab them, they're just going to slide off my hand. They're not even holding on to me. So, <laughs> so what do you want to do? Um, I'll try and, uh, I guess, just maneuver my hands out of the way so they, they'll miss. And okay. And Ailey, Ailey, what are you doing as them. they I, reach for your prisoner? I will step in front. And I'm trying to debate if the sentinel reaction uh, <laughs> helps me protect Graham from... Uh, Hands. You absolutely can block them. And what I want from you is an intimidate roll. Okay. I oh I have plus six. Let's do this. Fingers Ooh. crossed. Thirteen? <laughs> they like step back a step and one of them goes, Grah! And the the dwarf that's leading you sort of looks at you, looks at them both, and then says something again in Duraga or in Undercommon, which neither of you understand. And they back off, and you are led into the lift, and it rises, clanking, into the darkness. He looks at you both and says, "That was incredibly close. Those two guards were looking." for more humanoids to sacrifice to the Chardalin dragon. It is nearly... You're um, sacrificing to a dragon. Yeah, the, um... The, uh, Zardarek and his two sons, they've been collecting villages and townsfolk and anyone they can get hold of from the nearby towns. They managed to get a big group from... I forget the name. Uh, anyway, a town. They captured Kerkonic? Yes, yes, that's the name. Anyway, they're down below yeah. by the dragon being sacrificed to its fire. Once once it has enough souls inside it, it will rise and destroy the ten towns. Anyway, uh, let's go up and meet my mother. In my mind, I'm just saying, Ailey, <laughs> that is not good. That is very bad. We, we have to stop it. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So you are you are led up into the fortress. You are taken down through corridor after corridor. And you kind of do it's it's not so complicated that you can't you don't think you can get your way back to this left. And you arrive at a door and he gives two large knocks. Um, a man opens and he's another Duragar dressed in shining plate mail. And he looks you both up and down and says something. And then you are led in. Meanwhile, gone in the south is. <laughs> you are running through the complex. From behind you, you can hear the sounds of pursuit. And poor Nim uh, Nimbly. He's not called Nimbly, is he? I, I need to look up his name. Nimsy. Nimsy, thank you. Poor Nimsy is struggling on behind you. I, I can't run as fast as you. Please, we need to find somewhere to hide. Come on, where are you going? What do you want to do? No, it's muted, I think. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> um, my mouth moving. I think as he says the word hide, I'm going to, so we're like running down the corridor, right? And as he's mm -hmm. like saying, I can't keep up, we need to hide. As he says hide, I'm going to turn and look at Gun. And as I turn and look at Gun, I'm going to use an action and disguise myself into a dwarf because I have the spell Disguise Self. 
Nice. Okay. As a dwarf or a grey dwarf? A grey dwarf. Sorry. Nice. Um, and kind of like just uh, raise my eyebrows at Gun and say, he, he said hide. Gun. <laughs> Gun following suit also uses this guy himself to make himself a great dwarf. <laughs> the, the world's tallest great dwarf. But a great dwarf <laughs> he shrinks a bit. <laughs> so you tower above poor Nimbly. He looks <coughs> you left and right, and then in panic, just runs uh, but back in the direction he's. You've no, come. Gone grabs him before he starts running. <laughs> and stops him into the bag of holding. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get in. Tag him and tag him, boys. <laughs> uh, at the end of the corridor, three grey dwarves holding crossbows um, turn in your direction, and then sort of a sigh of relief crosses their faces as they march towards you, and they shout out, "Gara! Gara! Gara! Gara!" As they're saying that, can I can I shout in dwarvish? Uh, he went that way. So, pointed so- to the rooms. They dwarvish, don't speak dwarvish or do undercommon? Speak, do they speak any Dwarvish? I thought they might speak both. So uh, they may or may not speak Dwarvish, but they're speaking to you in undercommon. Well, then, uh, I, ain't got, uh, I ain't got a way to talk to Don, undercommon. Don just them. nods and points <laughs> in another direction. <laughs> That's actually better than my idea. <laughs> I laugh, but it's better than my idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I, I think that's pretty cool. So you can give me a, a social oh, role, um, but it, social role. So it could be it could be intimidate. It could be um, I, I've got called Cthulhu things deception, in my head right now. Maybe? Someone help me! Yeah, oh deception. God, all <laughs> work. Um, but you can roll with advantage because I think holding a prisoner and uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'll roll. Oh god, oh god, I'm the one doing it. Am I in? They're both minus one. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you have no social skills, even when you're not talking. <laughs> no. <laughs> can I use my inspiration to roll again? Oh, good you, call. If, good if call. you want to use your inspiration, you definitely can. Or, or if before you roll, if self. <laughs> oh is, my god! So you said before you roll, you hadn't rolled. If, I, did, like I did say before you roll. If, if self is, if you want to do something to try and like. Because obviously you're probably a bit more charismatic. Do you have more deception skill? Not much if more you... charismatic. I do have more deception skill. Yeah, okay, if than. you can think of a way of, of taking control of the situation so you get another role, you absolutely can. Oh boy, I really actually can't. And normally these are, this is why I excel in. Um... Yeah, I'll do... I know what I'll do. Uh... Can I... So I cast Mage Hand. So there's a Mage Hand floating around here somewhere. Okay. These guys are how far away from us? Um, they were at the end of the corridor. They're probably much closer now. So can I go like to one of the rooms near us? Like have so, let's say that now our gun pointed at that room. Can I have the mage hand like close the door? Oh, I like that. Yes, you definitely can. There you go. To give him an advantage on his inspiration, or what are we doing? Oh no, it's your it's your role. No, no, it's it's self is does deception. uh, deception, Yeah, I do. Okay, that works. The thing is, uh, even if I was good at it, I rolled a five, a two, and a four. Yeah, it didn't. It wasn't great. I got, I got a thirteen. A thirteen is probably enough. Although they look at you as they pass by, as if like, who are these people? I don't recognise either of these dwarves. <laughs> why? Why would anyone go in this room? And they push open the room and disappear inside. Your deception roll has got you a moment. What do you want to do? Gon wants to go over and bar the door. Just slam like, it. Face just slam it. Can I like slam it and like block? Is there like something I can put through the like the handles or something to lock? Like basically lock it. I have just a device for this thing. Take oh out my, my arrow. My my collapsible <laughs> pole. My collapsible <laughs> collapsible pole. Uh, the arrow that we use a collapsible pole, and like I'm gonna assume it's like um, opening handles. out. Into, it's no, it's opening out into the corridor, okay, and just basically so- put the pole across it. Nice. So yeah. So you you have blocked the door. Um, where do you wish to run? Do you want to go back the way you came? Do you want to carry on further down I think the corridor? No problem. I don't think we'll run anywhere. We we, we, we stay where you are. You're probably no, fine. No, it's just we're confidently. <laughs> we're looking to go. I guess we're looking to go deeper, Niall. Yeah, okay. we're look. We're trying to find the. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll yeah. Um, the that dragon that we saw on the map. It's it's here, but it's it's down deeper in the fort. Like it's underground somewhere. Yeah, it, it looked to be deep in the mountain, in the spine of the world. Which, when you think about it, it actually sounds pretty evil. I've no idea to think. <laughs> it's like we're all decided up anyway. Uh, Nimsy, we need you just to play along. Pretend you're our prisoner in case we come across more Durgar. Okay, so as you are strolling through the fortress, holding Nimsy like a prisoner. 
you notice something to your right, which is very strange. The corridor opens up and you see what seems to be a tunnel dropping straight down into a fiery cavern below and straight up into what seems to be darkness. And at the top of the darkness, there is a cap or a door or some, maybe a gate, but made out of complete frozen ice. Looking down into this drop, you see what could be the edge, the bottom of a Chardolin dragon tail. But it's like 150 feet below you. It's either that or a nice sculpture. It's one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> like they're having a party in a yeah. underground rave. It's like one of those ice bars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's no visible or clear way to get down. Like it's a smooth shaft. It's not the phrasing I want to use, but it's a smooth. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very specific in this in the book about how hard this shaft is to climb. I, we got to stop doing this motion, Joe. We got to stop doing this. Um, oh, God, we're children. So John it's. looks at Delphi and like, Spider. Ah, Maybe. spider. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or... or I have an idea. Um, oh, no. I conjure. <laughs> like, I use conjure animals and I conjure something big enough to carry us. A giant. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, there's not very many giant flying things, is there? There's not. I summon I mean... two. I, I summon a, gi <laughs> a giant eagle, I guess. Two nice. giant eagles. We're going to Lord of the Rings treat us. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So you jump on the back of these mighty beasts and descend down to the fiery darkness of the bowels of some light. Meanwhile, <laughs> yep. on in another place in the fortress, Graham and Ailey are entering a room. I, I think... I might actually have a description from here. Let me see if I can find one. That'd be nice. Okay. Um, All things considered, I'm actually interested to meet his mum. Okay. Um, seems nice. <laughs> three braziers heaped with glowing coals illuminate and heat this long hall. At the eastern end is a hexagonal stone table surrounded by six stone chairs. Seated in the chair facing the drawer is a haggard old Drugar, sorry, Durgar, with long black hair streaked with ribbons of white and fingernails like shards of iron. She is devouring a hearty buffet of cooked meats, mushrooms, and strange underdark fare. Lurking next to her is a small mechanical dragon made of a shiny black substance. Hunched over a hot stove to the west side of the room are three Duragar cooks. On the right next to you at the front of the room is an enormous table on which is a 3D map of 10 towns, well, Icewind Dale, but with 10 towns marked out. And on it, flying above it, is a tiny Chardolin dragon, flying from town to town, burning them with its radiant breath. Hunched over the stove at the west side of the room are three Duragar cooks. At the sight of you, they drop their utensils and reach for their weapons. But the old Duragar says something in undercommon that keeps them at bay and she beckons These cooks forward. were armed <laughs> <laughs> your dinner now <laughs> um, be very careful um, I wasn't entirely honest um, my mother asked me to find how should I say a distraction for her the uprising and I thought maybe you would make a good distraction she is very, very dangerous. Don't cross her, whatever you do. And then he backs out of the room and shuts the door. What a guy. Love that for us. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm casually walking with my back as close as I can to the wall. And then I just start walking up the wall very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I will approach the mother. <laughs> <laughs> but also very slowly. 
Mm-hmm. Um, she beckons you to sit down. She obviously doesn't recognize you at all, and she's not phased by Graham walking up the wall. Um, <laughs> she's raised an arm to stop the three guards approaching you, and she says something in Dwarvis, Dwar- in Undercommon, her, her voice very accented. And when you don't respond, she repeats it in common. And she says, No. Oh. I'm assuming my son has brought you here for some bizarre reason of his. But you interest me. Sit down. Join us, or join me in my meal. It is okay. Fried intellect devourer. The brain is a little stodgy, but not too bad. And you there, get off the ceiling and join me here. Is that common I hear? Excellent. Right. <laughs> and I just start walking down and I throw the shackles off me, the, the, the manacles. And uh, yeah, I got to have a seat. So, so what do you have you, planned for us? Yeah. <laughs> well, she, she, the, the, the bodyguards looking very abashed and rather annoyed by having to cater to you, put a plate in front of both of you and they reveal the kind of like the metal tray that's hiding mm-hmm. it. And there are indeed fried intellect devourers, bluish greenish brains with blue furred paws coming off in each direction, four of them. Um, the smell is needless to say disgusting made worse by the fact that the the steaming meal placed in front of you is covered in a light dusting of ash would you like so it would drink? be rude for me to not try this i'll give it a go try anything Ailey. once Ailey does not try it <laughs> Ailey's fight or flight has kicked in no thanks no no but but you'll know you'll know because i'll tell you uh, through the, the mental link i'll let you know that whether it's palatable or not <laughs> it is absolutely disgusting and if you're actually going to eat it I need to make me a constitution save oh, we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well I've put it in my mouth I'm chewing it a bit and then I spit it out is, is that alright I'm not going to swallow it yeah and she doesn't seem abashed by that at all and she sort of starts devouring no, no, I'm like, it as well I'm assuming that's an acquired taste <laughs> you surface folk in your weird food. I am not really expecting you to manage it, but fair play for you for trying. Anyway, why should I not murder you both where you stand? From what I understand, we could we could be of assistance. Go on. I believe oh. your son. Yeah. Go ahead. Ailey can explain. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you keeping up the dwarven guys, Ailey, or are you gonna mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like the the Okay, maybe not. Um your son said that um you perhaps require a distraction. Did he? Um so that you can uh enact your plan or um yeah. Execute order sixty six. <laughs> well, my son is indeed correct there. He is, like he always done, taken a very simple set of instructions, thrown them in the bin, and created something entirely new. But for once, maybe, maybe you could be of use. What has he told you of the politics, if, a, if anything at all, of some light? Just that um, uh, some blight of the worst, and uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the guards go, yes, the worst! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and that they, they have to be gotten rid of immediately. Either. No tolerance. As of around two hours ago, we have started our takeover of some blight. We at the Musgarets, and myself as matron Musgaret, have had enough of our tenure in this frozen wasteland. We are leaving, and we are not living under the sunblight rule any further. 
my clan have spaced themselves around the fortress ready to strike. But my fiance, Zardark, is powerful. He is the one thing, him and that disgusting dragon creature that he has created, the only thing that I worry for. Maybe you could provide that distraction. You could distract Zardarak. Kill him if you could. We will use that as an opportunity to take over this fortress. And you may have your lives and an ample reward as befitting someone who has enabled this treachery. Well, Ailey, thoughts? I'm doing this in my mind. <laughs> and okay. She will respond in her mind. I want to ask about the dragon. That should be something we get involved with, even in the coup. Yeah. So what about this dragon? <laughs> Have you heard about that dragon downstairs? <laughs> yeah. Crazy, huh? Kind of like, whack. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Uh, so what are you asking? Obviously, a lot of this is taking um, place in this sort of mental Yeah, we're just like staring you... at each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I've, I've said out in the open, uh, on the table for, for mum to hear. Um, for mum to hear? Yeah. Mumsy. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, mother, tell me. Uh, no. The, <laughs> um, uh, so, so what were you saying about a dragon? Your husband has a dragon. Uh, the fiancé is not my husband, or that he wishes to join the mighty Musgarets to their puny sunblights. And he has me hostage here, but he has created a larger version of this, and she reaches up and strokes the crystalline dragon, which is crawling up and down her arm. Hmm. A mighty version of this from the Chardelin crystals collected throughout the dale. He is right now infusing it with the souls of those how many humans and surface folk that he's captured from nearby towns with every death it gains in power I believe he wishes to um, and she points over to the table mm -hmm. send it off against the ten towns you can see it the route over there it what would your fiance need to, to send this monstrosity against the ten towns hours, time, minutes, who knows maybe it's left already he's sacrificing the villages as we speak and when it is full to brimming with souls as he says it will fly perhaps out if, it prevents perhaps it. if uh, myself and Ailey were to um, uh, maybe interfere with the, the sacrificing process maybe we could uh, yeah. distract him mm-hmm she, um, she Wouldn't that give us attention? And yes. Then says, uh, yes, uh, you, give me the thing, the thing. And she clicks her fingers, and one of the guards brings over something which looks like a long tube. Um, this, this rocket, when you have him at prime distraction and you are ready for Musgarret to take control, light this rocket. It will signal our takeover. Here. She thrusts it into your hands, and it's basically like a giant firework with a huge fuse at the bottom. Wow. Okay. Um, where would we find the dragon? Yes. Where are these sacrifices taking place? Down below. My guards will take you down to him, but they will not accompany you onto the furnace floor. We cannot give away our treachery before... <laughs> Before the rocket goes off, we will get in place. You two, go. Send out the words. Send out the command. We. There will be blood tonight. And as you are led, unless there's anything else you wish to do. No. <laughs> and as you are led out of the room and into the darkness of a set of secret corridors which will take you eventually down to the cavernous furnace below. We are going to change the camera to Zelfers and Gone as you descend down the icy tunnel to the same location. This 
uh, is a <laughs> complicated room, and I do apologize. It would be, I'd, I'd love for people to see the map. That would be fantastic. But unfortunately, we haven't managed to get that done today. So I will do my best to describe it. It's a tricky one. Um, oh God. <laughs> there, there, it's mainly just paying attention to the main kind of things that you see. Um, so let me see. So smoke fills this warm cavern, which has a ceiling that ranges from 40 feet high down to 20 feet along the southern wall. The source of the smoke and the heat is a 10-foot tall stone forge shaped like a pyramid with its peak sheared off. Ripples of heat and flashes of firelight spew from the top of the forge, which emits a deep pulsating heartbeat. There is a line of villagers and townsfolks stripped their undergarments, lining up this cigarette and being thrown down into the fiery depths of the forge below. From your elevated height, you can see them drop down into a fiery inferno and at its center, something red and pulsating. Um, can you both give me a quick nature roll to see if you recognize this thing? Oh man, my first hand was thinking Sandy. All right, right. <laughs> maybe I'll roll above a 10. Yeah. Uh, I got a 18 plus 3, 21. 18 Woo! plus 3, okay. This at the center of the forge is a pulsating red dragon's heart. Oh, wow. Powering its dark magics. Overlooking the forge, uh, sorry, a five foot deep trough extends east from the forge, a fiery river of what seems to be lava which flows down between rows upon rows of black anvils. Overlooking the forge are four 20-foot tall guard towers. And from your elevated height, you can see that each guard tower has three greystone dwarves in, standing behind their low battlements. South of the forge is something incredible an enormous five foot high iron platform fitted with cranes and clamps. A short iron flight of iron stairs leads up to it and on it is an incredible creature. A huge dragon formed of crystalline chardolin with a fiery burning heart at its center and glowing red eyes. It stands motionless as one by one the townsfolk are fed into the forge there's a flash of light and something flies from the forge into the dragon's being and that fiery rocket in its center begins to expand standing before or in between the forge and the dragon is Zardok Sunblight a, a grey skinned dwarf dressed in an armor of chardolin with a nine-pointed crown on his head with a chardolin gauntlets directing the, the guards who are feeding the villagers into the forge. As you look to one side, you see Graham and Ailey entering unseen near one of the guard towers. No one seems to see you as you descend on this giant eagle. Just two eagles. <clears throat> just, just, giant just eagle. <laughs> eagle. We, we have rolling uh, cheap here. We're falling down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh, Zuff is. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we are not in a good place. Uh, look, I, I don't know what we need to do. First thing we need to do here is. I don't know if we can stop that inferno or that dragon heart, but we need to cover it up or stop people being sacrificed to it. Because you, you heard... Uh, we don't know heard, what's going no, on. The, the, speaker, the speaker was saying he was sacrificing... Last episode, he said he was sacrificing or trying to control the villagers. And that was giving power to something. We didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah. Okay. We, see? See? We, we know that the, the villagers are... are bringing power to whatever this plan is we need we need to stop them being thrown into that inferno then we need to get down to that forge yeah like i, I don't know it, like i don't know how we do that like 
is there anything is there any convenient like capstones or anything that looks like it would have actually covered over this no definitely not and uh alien graham what do you wish to do is you're kind of led into the edge of this cavern before Mm -hmm. you the scene that i described spreads out you've got the one of the guard towers rises 20 feet above you to your left in front of you is the forge and to your right is the mighty dragon with zardok uh zardok standing in between it um the the forge and the the dragon so I'm, I, I'm guessing I can see Zalfis and gone. Yeah, we can see. Um, you need to give me perception rolls. They are like they're up mm. the tunnel above the dragon, so you you do have sight of them. You'd have to glance up to see them. Okay. Um... And just a quick question: the guard is no longer with us. No, he's left you at the door. <sighs> he's I dropped the disguise. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Pick up the. the I, I grabbed I the. I passed back. Hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you Thanks. give me a perception roll? Yes, I got a seventeen. 17 yes you do you glance up and believe it or not there are two eagles floating up very high up in the ceiling one which presumably has selfies and gone on because they're talking to each other and the other one has lady pen and nimbly (laughs) (laughs) okay and i'm 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 waving trying to get their attention but without obviously alerting anything else being like oh that's them your friends (laughs) yeah finally how high are they blue one um, <laughs> um I, I, I only that the weekend. Forty. Okay. 45. Um. So from that, that height, looks like it's mostly hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> mostly hair. Well, from that height, I can connect mentally still. Nice. Uh, okay. So, so you can discuss as a group what you wish to do. Yeah. Um. I don't know what's going on here, but we've got to stop those people dying. Another villager is thrown to their fiery death. Ah! Um. <laughs> The folly is amazing. <laughs> we met with the um, mother. No, the, <laughs> the mother. Uh, the, the mother. We, we um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to bring you up to speed with everything that happened there. Um, ah, ah, okay. Ah. Gone. okay we, we have to do something now. <laughs> Gone, seeing this, commands the eagles that he's on to. He wants to just basically get down and stop the dwarf that's throwing people into the furnace. He wants to get to the furnace. Nice. And we, can, we can tell that he's like, force pushing basically with this gauntlet is that what it looks like to us um so no there's actually there's two guards at the top of the they, i mean there's actually quite a few guards if you look around there'll be six duragar um in and around this line of villagers who are sort of keeping them in line and pushing them up and then throwing them into there um as we get closer as i get closer anyway on the eagle i would like to jump off its back and have the eagle basically swoop at the dwarves that are throwing them in and knock the dwarves in and nice. try to stop people getting thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what you're going to do. Because uh, let's plan it out before we do it. Um, Zalfiz, you're on the same eagle, so you're kind of committed unless you want to jump off or do something different. Am I on the second eagle? Let's just, just establish that. Well, you were kind of talking <laughs> to each other, but I guess yeah, but you we can, can talk shouting. back and forth to each other. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> when I, like when I've surveyed the area, I've seen this crazy demonic looking dwarf yeah. king with you, what, what's it called what's the actual that guy's called again uh chardlin chardlin so like i know the chardlin is not good stuff and very powerful so i'm going to try and cast shatter on him nice Ooh. okay so you're going to swoop down and cast shatter on him okay yes. uh, um ailey what do you want to do i would like to channel divinity watcher's will for graham who's next to me so he will have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws for nice. a minute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Very and, cool. Uh, is everything? I think maybe I'm struggling with the room, but is everything? Where are we in that position? Because I know we see you're the sort of um, you're sort of in the so the the dragon is in the south. Oh, nice. We even have a map. Um, so the, the sort of square, uh, the large square in the centre of the dragon is. There's this sort of like fiery channel there, and then in front of that is the the ziggurat. You're the sort of north west corner of the room. Okay, and ziggurat is the fiance. Just remember. Um, sorry, the ziggurat is the pyramid, the forge. Oh, yeah. Um, the the fiance is in between the forge and the he's called he's called Zardok uh, platform yeah Zardok 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 uh, I'd like to javelin him <laughs> nice okay you're <laughs> definitely immediate... in range <laughs> definitely <laughs> in range uh, so you're going to attack uh, Graham what do you want to do remember I'm you're I think you're probably hat. holding this rocket as well yeah yeah I'm putting the 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 uh, hat on my head that 
uh, the the hat of disguise, and uh, I want to look like uh, like the mum uh, or the fiance. Um, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, so I'm storming out. I'm assuming he's there, right? He's in, yeah, so he's right in the middle. He's like directing all these villagers yeah, dying. You want to yeah, browbeat yeah. him. This will be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Into submission. Let's browbeat him. Yeah. Submission. Uh, so I'm assuming that she's being held against her will at the moment. Who? So um, the fiancé, you said, at the moment. She is. No, the, the fiancé is Zardarak. You've left uh, lay, uh, Grandolfa Musgart uh, up in the that room. Yeah, I mean, but the, the mum's not there. Mum's not no, there. But she's been held against her will at the moment. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant like actually yeah, in yeah. the room. No, no. Yeah, she absolutely, she does seem to be, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to storm in. I'm going to put on the hat. I'm like, thank you for the charisma, Ailey. I'm probably going to need this. Put it on. Right. Stop there. <laughs> right. Let's all roll initiative and let's see what happens. Let's see how this plays <laughs> out. But oh, if you yes. guys want to hold off to see what Graham does, that's possible. So let's get the initiative count ready for this. The epic battle, the finale of Rome and the Frost Maiden season one. So, uh, Zalfiz, how do you do? Uh, I rolled a 22. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Get in. <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally done an initiative. Gone. Oh God. Here we go. Ooh, 17 plus 1, 18. Nice. nice. Okay, Ailey. Right. Seven. Graham. <laughs> oh, let's take a look. 18. 18. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see how the dwarves go. I'm going to do the, 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 the guards together. Um, so they get a 10. And Zardarok, I'm going to do him separately. Um, he gets a... Oh, God. He gets nice. a... Nice. Thank God. He's Love yours, okay. very distracted. So now we have initiative in place. Let's keep out of initiative for now as Graham strides forward as um, Grand Dolpho Musgat. Um, uh, and I sort of look at him and I'm like, I cannot believe you. I cannot believe you. <laughs> he turns around and goes, Ah, my lady, you have come here to see my victory. See, my pet is almost ready. Deep Dura is going to be pleased with the sacrifice of the puny surface folk. I look at him and I, I walk over very slowly and I'm, I'm looking around at, at what he's doing and I'm like, this... This work is amazing. Truly amazing. I can't believe I didn't... You know? And then I turn to him and I slap him across the face. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you wish, your slap can have sneak attack damage because he is absolutely <laughs> taken by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's two of us. No, no, we're not going to do it. It's not combat yet, but uh, slap him across the face and... Um, you thought you could just leave me up in that room. Leave me away from all of this. You didn't think I'd want to be a part of it? But what do you mean? You wish to join me by my side? You wish to become Lady Sumblite and together... And he yes. tries to put his arm around you. We will destroy the foe of his folk together. Yes! And I pulled his arm around me and I'm like, of course, we were always meant to be together. <laughs> he points up to the platform where the villagers stand and he shouts, throw them all in. We are ready. Throw them all in. Oh no. no. Halt, halt, you can't, you can't rush these things. And they just start <laughs> pushing. <laughs> no. So, with a 20, 22 <laughs> initiative, Zelf is, what do you wish to do? So, because I we have this mind link that yes. um, Ailey's done, I know that that's um, Graham, right? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to see that and change my tack slightly. Rather than trying to cast Shatter on that area, I'm going to cast Shatter on the dragon. The dragon sculpture. Wow. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so give me. Uh, you just you don't need to do anything to hit. You just need to give me a straight up damage roll. Uh, let me remember what that is. Inorganic material have disadvantage. So it's three d eight. Okay. Uh, 
Please be good. <laughs> oh, I take it. <laughs> 19. Okay. <laughs> you can straight up double that. It is particularly vulnerable as the crystal just explodes. Oh, and well, there we go. Cardolin sprays in all directions, <laughs> and Zardarot spins round in horror, throwing you aside, uh, Graham, even as his you know, his love, quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> and he raises his fist, his glowing chardolin bound gauntlet towards you Zalfiz as you dive down on the back of this eagle but it isn't his go it's your go gone um <laughs> uh, <laughs> like yeah seeing this he's she's the the, the Duragar distracted he would still like to stop the two Duragar that are throwing people into the furnace Nice, so okay. Once you land up there with the eagle, well, ideally jump off the eagle a bit further back and let it just dive bomb into the two Dorgar. Okay. Um, yeah, just let the eagle attack them, basically. Try okay. Just them into the furnace. So rather than you um, rolling for the eagle attacking, I'd like you to roll for the Dorgar to see if they can keep their balance. So <laughs> they need to get uh, over 12 on a d20. They don't get any pluses. So let's see. If you can get under 12, they fall in. I'm good at rolling, though. <laughs> Thought you might like that. <laughs> <laughs> the first one keeps his balance as the eagle flies by. Second one. Oh, God, here we go. Ooh. Oh, buddy. Not only, not only does it not fall in, but with that critical, it grabs onto the eagle and is carried up into the darkness of the cavern above as it's stabbing into it okay. with its chardling weapon. I unsummon the eagle when it's about 50 <laughs> feet in the air. I <laughs> just let the Jericho fall. <laughs> he, for, he begins to plummet to the ground and you see at the top of each of the towers, the Duragar guards are leveling their crossbows towards you. Um, next up, we have um, the Duragar guards. <laughs> I just can't get a break. Um, oh no, look, Graham, what did, what did you get? I haven't, too, I haven't but got your I've got an 18. No. an 18. I got the Sorry. same as gone. Uh, that's you then, so mm -hmm. you're next. Yeah. So, um, as I've been thrown to the, the I've yeah. been cast aside uh, in this moment, and he's looking to strike down Zelfis. Uh, I spring back to my feet and I grab my hands around his gauntlet and then I try and slide of hand it off while I'm like, allow me. <laughs> okay, that is perfect. I will strike him down for you. Okay. Let me do this thing. So, uh, do I try and slide of, slide of hand? That's plus yeah, nine. Absolutely give me that sleight of hand. Ooh. Oh, 15. 15, so it's going to be opposed. Um, I'm going to let you roll because I don't have roll 20 in front of me right now. Uh, he doesn't. He has a plus one, I think. Hang on. No, he has a plus zero to dex. So. Oh, plus zero to dex. So that's uh, 15 he got as well. <laughs> so it's 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> okay. So in this situation, the defender wins. So he, he looks at you horrified as you try and pull the gauntlet to, off his hand, but then he just flings you backwards. Um, if you want mm. to light the rocket at this point, you absolutely can. Yeah, I will. I will light the rocket uh, and it... fire it. Okay, where do you want to fire it? Straight into his chest. <laughs> okay, uh, you can give me an attack roll, and again, this is going to be a complete surprise. <laughs> it will definitely yeah. have sneak attack damage. Okay, so I guess I get the standard plus six because I'm. Thinking it's, of it like, as like it's like you'd firing a bow or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's twenty-two. Ooh. Is that a nat 20? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Um, so the rocket flies out of your hand, leaving a burning, smoking trail behind it. Uh, Multicoloured flames spray out the back as it flies into his face and explodes in a shower of sparks. He seems more <laughs> stunned at first, although you do get sneak attacks, so you may have actually managed to hit him in a particularly vulnerable place. Um, so the rocket so just does a d4, uh, but then you get 3d6 on top. Okay, so 3d6 plus 3, I think? Is it? Yeah, there we go. No, you get no plus, just need tech. Oh, no plus? No. Right, uh, so you, you, know, you, plus you, you do get your pluses. Uh, yeah, just the regular plus, plus to the attack. Yeah. No, you don't get the plus to your sneak attack at all. Oh, no? Okay. No, no. No, okay. but it's to an attack, so you'd get it's, it's 3d6 plus 3 plus his uh, 1d4 for the rocket. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. No, so okay, here's yeah, the one d four. It's a three, so that's 12 damage. 12 damage. Um, you hit him straight in the face, and he's momentarily blinded, and he stumbles back. Um, I'm like, whoops, sorry, dearie. The room <laughs> fills with multicolored <laughs> explosions, and from the top of the guard towers, you see the guards battling each other as the Moose Guard members draw their daggers and plunge them into the Sunblight guards. Hey... <laughs> um, however, some some black guards are going to uh, start attacking, and I believe, Gon, you are the most exposed as two Duragard pound down the um, uh, the ziggurat towards you, leaving their prisoners behind. Um, so these Duragard get. Yeah, I, mean, I uh, guess I've achieved my goal. <laughs> 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 Not by any means of what I wanted to do, but. Uh, so they're going to win large. <laughs> so they seem to grow double in size, towering above you, or probably for you, actually, they're equal in height. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they swing their war picks towards you. They get plus four. Um, so... Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, one Yay! natural one loses footing and slides down the ziggurat out of your, out of your sight. Uh, the second one gets an 11. It's a miss. <laughs> it's a miss. You are absolutely fine. The other guards are currently... Um, oh, no, sorry. There's two that are going to charge towards um, Kaylee. Um, they're going to throw their javelins towards you. Plus four, so a seven. No. And a... Oh, God, a 14? They can dream. <laughs> <laughs> I have a shield uh, and chainmail. Uh, it is your go. It's your round. What do you wish to do? I, quick question. Can I smite on two different attacks? Or is that like a one, like a spell casting? You can only do it once per round. Um, I'm going to say you can do it on two different attacks. That sounds right. more fun. So <laughs> I, uh, Ailey will take out two javelins. Uh, they glow with smite energy as she tries to attempt to hit um, a horrible fiance. <laughs> I rolled the wrong. Ignore that second dice. But um, Poor guys I don't that. know why it rolled twice. But anyway, twenty-four to hit. That is absolutely hit. Um, should I just roll the? Uh, do both. The if you're doing both on the same person, do both at one. Both do yeah. both hits. Then we'll do damage all together. I don't know why. Sorry, it keeps. Okay, no, that's the right one. Eighteen to hit. 18 to hit is a hit as well. So your javelins pierce through his chardling chainmail, leaving a splatter of blood infused with the power of your smite energy. Do you want to do your damage? Yes, it's a 1d4 plus 6. So, and then... So 2d4 plus 12 plus 48. Okay, so... It... <laughs> oh my god, it's a lot of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 48. Okay. Okay. So, 17 plus 12. Nice. Okay, so it's 29, 29 points of damage. <laughs> uh, what color is the your smite? Your smite energy? White. Nice. Okay. Um, and he, again, blinded by the rocket, um, struck by the javelins, he falls back into the dragon, um, which has obviously been partially shattered. On his round, he reaches up his hand, not knowing who to strike, but his gaze falls on his fiance. <laughs> <laughs> his eyes flash green for a moment and you see the chardlin madness burning within them and graham his hand burns with power as it flies towards you an eldritch blast in fact two eldritch blasts oh can i use my reaction can um, i as he's falling yeah. still to still okay. do sentinel <laughs> um you're about <laughs> about 30 feet away oh, so no, i don't think mind. sentinel works yeah rip okay so he gets, <laughs> so this is he's pretty good at attacking with his eldritch blast it's a 17 uh so 24 and a 16 to hit graham uh so 24 and a 16 that's uh, they both hit <laughs> oh, no. okay. um so 
He does quite a bit of damage as you are blasted. Two blasts take you in your chest, um, forcing you back um, for a total of 16 points of damage. Ooh, that hurts. You were once my love and you had a chance for greatness, but your body will now feed my furnace. Deep Dura, guide my hand. Um, and I believe when I take off the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for your I take off the hat going. <laughs> it was I. Uh, you it was never knew that you loved me. Maybe he'll die of a broken yeah. heart. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Zalfiz, top of the round. And I believe you're still on the back of your eagle. So I'm going to... I've seen all this happen. I'm going to try and land the eagle next to uh, Zardok. Okay. Um, and they see just kind of... So turn side saddle, slide off this eagle. Um, take a glove off my hand. And you see a small ring with two little protrusions off the top of it. And try and punch Zardok. Oh, with wow. the ring of the ram. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> First three charges, if possible. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's a plus seven to hit. Okay. Oh. Gonna get this, this, it only pushed him five feet away, but it should. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use um, my inspiration? Hold up. I I was gonna inspiration. Say, you could use it because a one is definitely not a hit, but you can use your inspiration. All my neighbors would hate me as well. That was so loud. <laughs> Come on, Owen. Please. That was crazy. 15. Uh, a 15. A um, 15 is not a hit. Didn't think so. Technically, uh, technically, Owen is a halfling. Owen could have re rolled that one and still had inspiration. I'm not a oh, halfling. Yeah. I'm a gnome. I'm a right, gnome. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always Thanks. a halfling. Not because it's the one game. I'm not a halfling. Thanks for the help, Dora. <laughs> You're um, welcome. Just... <laughs> um, I will say that Gordon could use his inspiration if he wished to. Sure. Yeah. If it hasn't been used did, already. Did he not already use it? I, I, thought use it? I was going to use it earlier, but we didn't because we let Owen uh, chime in rather oh, than cool. earning my inspiration. Oh, I don't okay. want to fail three in a row. I think. Are we, are we, we going to we'll, go we'll again? We'll go with it. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. Screw it. It's the finale. <laughs> Please, God. You're a, oh, no. You are a waste. <laughs> uh, I'm good as my bonus action. Get the bag of holding and just crawl into it and cry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put my glove. So is a swim. Look. I wasn't the most athletic kid. I'm a scientist by heart. Uh, swing and a miss with three punches and the glove goes back onto my hands. He looks down at you and <laughs> says something like, you are so small and pathetic. I will use your body to feed my furnace. You're, you're um, surprisingly nimble. And <laughs> it is Graham's round. Oh, that was the worst I've ever done. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. It's a... Uh, it probably it should have been Graham's round because you've got higher yeah. decks. Yeah, you've got yeah, yeah. Decks. We just did it wrong the first time. Yeah. Tim Wheater. So it is my turn. Oh yeah. yeah. So yes. you've just seen yeah. Selfies drop down and go ha, and this sort of burst of yeah. ram like and energy. And I've taken off out. the. Actually, wait. I didn't take my hat off earlier because we didn't get. To you could do it now it. if you want. Yeah, yeah. So I'll run up to him. I'll get. I'll kiss him. You don't. You don't need to run up to him. You're standing like, ah. at his feet. <laughs> and then stab him. <laughs> <laughs> the double betrayal. <laughs> okay, give me that attack. Oh, here we go. It's with the I can't believe there's that many fails. <laughs> yeah, so that's so upsetting. Three in a row. That's a twenty. Dirty twenty. A twenty <laughs> is a, a, definitely a hit. <laughs> ah, okay, so that's one uh, d eight plus three, and because. He's in combat with somebody else. I also get sneak attack, so that's nine damage plus uh, is it 3d6. And that's it. Uh, 3d6 plus your sneak whatever attack. weapon you're using, yeah. Plus three. Okay, so it's 10. That's 19 damage total. So I stab wow. him and I'm like. <laughs> that is Ow. a ton of damage. Mm -hmm. He screams and clutches his chest, stumbling back. Um, and then the hat is... comes off. <laughs> Dramatic reveal. <gasps> it is I, I am not my lady. Um, and you never had up, a lady. <laughs> Perfect. He not only have you stabbed him through the heart, but his heart is now broken. Um, 
Gone. <laughs> it is your round. Um, Gone would like to, and would would Gone know that um, Jirigar have uh, bad vision in actual like daylight? Um, give me a nature roll. Okay, because this will decide my next turn. Nature roll plus three. I wish you inspiration for this. Not twenty. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you is, did. Uh, okay, gone cast daylight on the whole room because it's like a sixty foot radius. It's a huge wow. amount, and he basically half blinds all the Duragar in here. Um, um, disadvantage on attack rolls. Yeah. So I'm helping everyone, uh, and then on top of that, Gon is going to transform into a polar bear, and attack the nearest Duragar to him, or go to attack, get ready to attack the nearest okay. Duragar to him. So launch yourself at the guards that are still trying to push the villagers towards the burning inferno. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up, we have the guards. So there's two more guards who are going to run down the. Um, the ziggurat towards Ailey, um, and they're going to try and strike at you with their war picks. Um, they get, say, the first one, plus three. Disadvantage. Uh, gets a 13, uh, so no. it's a miss anyway. Uh, the second one is also a miss, so they, they're blinded by the sunlight, strike at you, but you easily dodge their blows. There's going to be two attacks on you gone from the Duragar guards. Oops, that's the wrong button. They both miss. They, they <laughs> rolled 2d10 for some reason. Let's try that again. Um, um, a Thursday at 16. Uh, disadvantage, please. Okay. And a <laughs> 10. <laughs> that misses. <laughs> okay, the second one strikes at you. Uh, a miss. From round the side of the ziggurat, you hear a clanking creaking, clanking noise as a mechanical abomination edges into view. It is a Duragar, frozen white like a corpse, encased within a mechanical contraption. One hand is an enormous hammer, the other hand is a snipping claw, and it looks up at you with burning dead eyes and starts climbing up the ziggurat. Um, this one has a bit more to hit, and it strikes at you with its claw. Um, definitely a hit. Would you like me to roll disadvantage? Uh, is this hitting me or... It's Ailey? hitting you. Okay. Uh, well, would it have disadvantage? Is it Jargar in it? Uh, no, it is, but it actually doesn't have disadvantage. No, I was just going to say, ha <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, so it hits me. <laughs> it hits you with the claw. Ha-ha! <laughs> and uh, with its hammer, it also hits you. Um, so this Duragar hammer strikes down for quite a lot of damage. Oh, no. um, Godspeed, oh. gun. Time for the Peace. third time in the episode. Right, Bye, guys. Um, oh, gosh. Sorry. I think I might start bringing real dice to this because it's so hard for me to do this with uh, having Track so many pad. screens. Yeah. Yeah, so I've, I haven't got a mouse right now. Okay, so it does 19 points of damage on you. Is that the total damage? Total damage, yeah. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> uh, next up, I believe, is uh, Ailey. I think you really stressed me out. Um, uh, so Ailey sees the large kind of mechanical abomination join the fight and decides that as a paladin, that's probably where she needs to focus her attention. Um, is, it, is it near me? Do I have to... Um, you'd have to run past the two guards that are engaging you and up the ziggurat to where it's fighting gone. Okay, I don't, I'll have to deal with these guards first. So I will make two attacks um, on the one, just one of them. You can pick, but we'll, both attacks to one. Okay. And then, so that's the first roll. 22. 22 is a hit, yes. You strike through his uh, darkened chainmail. Pretty good. <laughs> and I'm going to attack with my Hellfire Blade. Wow. So six plus, ooh, what was it? Six four. plus four. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you wish to do any spite to it as well? Yes. Spite or smite? Smite. <laughs> and spite. It's just yeah. mad. I'll just do it at um, the level one slot. Okay. So it's a 2d8. Yeah. Plus eight. So 
14. Ooh, that is a lot of damage. He struggles back, a spray of blood, and he's still alive, but he is, he is absolutely bloodied and turns away from you. He, know, he wants no more of this battle. <laughs> With a blink, he's gone, turned invisible. Um, there is a second one facing you, but if you do want to provoke an attack of opportunity and just run by him to engage the hammerer that's fighting against Gon. I would, I would. I, w- yeah. I was hoping I could kind of intimidate him <laughs> like that, as I run by. Um. Uh, he is going to take a shot at you, and he gets a 11. No. Uh, well, at disadvantage. So he flinches. So. <laughs> he is very intimidated what? by as you run up the ziggurat towards the Durgar, the Durgar hammer, and we are top of the round. Zalf is. Oh, I'm reluctant to try this again, but let's... Uh, basically, he's going to walk over towards Zaradok again, kind of crack his knuckles and like poke him in the you don't need to walk over you're lying at his feet right now he's standing above you <laughs> so poke him in the knee and then try and punch him again with his ring let's see how it goes i'm okay. so scared he's uh... been slapped he's been kissed he's been stabbed he's having quite the evening <laughs> javelin twice <laughs> another twice. 11 um oh my god boy no. oh boy oh boy uh yeah, yeah that's me pretty much done i'm going to just before my go ends i am going to um have so my homunculus has lady penguin in the bag of holding just make sure she pops down beside me as well nice um and i can use my bonus action to cast so can i have it so she's beside me because she then casts yeah. a cone of flame in front of her which won't hit me okay that makes sense yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense let's see if i can actually hit him with something good god uh, uh, um and i'm going to do a flame chore which is why is there so much text for this one? Well, Owen does that. Aram, do you have the Sorry. picture of the battle of, of um, uh, Zardok fighting? Because I know we, we were trying to, we we're going to display it. I don't know if it's possible because it's such an amazing piece of artwork. Of um, Maybe. Of keep words. keep going, maybe. See if it so, can come up. <laughs> Dex, you need to roll a Dex um, saving show of 15. Okay, he doesn't get any pluses for his Dex. Uh, let's God. see how he does. Uh, he gets a 7. Oh, thank God, I hit something. I did something. I'm helping, guys. <laughs> All right, 2d8 damage, fire. Nice. Uh, bu- 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 oh, that's only one. So first one is a three. Second one is nine total damage. No, he is looking really, really badly damaged, actually, as his beard sort of engulfs in flames and he staggers <laughs> back again. Um, the, Graham? Um, yeah, I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> just going to stab him yet again. We're just all having goes at stabbing him at this point. You take that. Right. So the rapier, I'm like, oh, I rolled a 10. That's not good. A 10 is not going to do it. No, he manages to, despite nope. being a flame, he strikes your, uh, your blow down with his, uh, with his gauntleted hand. Uh, gone. Oh, so I'm going to use the... Oh, I'll just back off my 30 feet and take out my crossbow. <laughs> Disengage, because I can use that as a bonus action. Nice. Uh, okay. All right. Gone. How far away is uh, Zardarok from me? Uh, it's like 15 feet. Like, it's all quite close quarters where you're actually currently standing. Okay. Um, I would like to disengage from the... Well, I'll run away from the hammer because I do not like being hit by this thing. <laughs> um, which will provoke <laughs> opportunity attack on me, but I would also like to just run over and multi-attack the dwarf. Okay. The hammer arm is going to come down upon you, which is the damaging arm, and it... Oh! It almost rolled a 19. It's ended up with a 3. <laughs> the, you can hear the disappointment in Joe's, Joe's yeah, voice that he didn't get to destroy me there. Like... <laughs> Thank it went, you, aha, last round, to be fair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I get a multi-attack, which is okay. pretty fun. Um, where's the polar As a bear? giant polar bear. Yeah, plus seven to hit for each. So okay. uh, one of them is a claw attack, and one of them is a bite attack. That is a an 18. 18 is a hit. That is for the bite, and for the claw, I rolled a six plus seven, so a 13. A 13 won't do it. Damn it. Okay, the bite. Do, 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 do. 1d8 plus 5. I rolled a 6 plus 5 and 11. 11. On attacking him. Wow, okay. And now he... there is a gigantic bear attacking this man. Fantastic. Or this dwarf. 
Okay. Um, he is now um, all the Durga. <laughs> the, the one that you were facing against uh, Aelia has nothing to do with you, but the Hammerer is going to try and take you down. Um, let's see how he does. Um, one shoots towards you with a, I believe it's a 14. That's not going to do it. Um, and his hammer comes down with oh, another, yeah. another miss. <laughs> <laughs> um, Disappointing. So, uh, Ailey, it's your go. Um, Ailey laughs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just going to attack the hammered uh, kind of abomination twice. I'm just going to go for it. Um, So that's the first roll, and this is the second roll. So 19 and 17. They're both hits clanging against this uh, this creature. I believe, hang on, there is a thing with the hammer where you can try and attack its, like, the body, um, but you can target the, Drug the Durgar trapped within it. Um, if you want to roll disadvantage on one of your rolls, you get to do a lot more damage to it if you manage to hit, if you want to try and target sure. the Durgar head. Uh... 26 so 17 and 19 would still so hit. you st so one of your hits will actually strike against the the Duragar body and will do an extra d10 damage yay um mm. okay <laughs> yay yay <laughs> I really, this pleases me um okay so the 4d6 is just for the normal attack and yeah. then extra 46 plus 8 oh so add 4 to that 19 okay. and then no smite uh, and then, um, what was the extra damage? Uh, an extra d10. d10. Uh, Seven. Nice, okay. So 26. Um, Zardarak is on his last feet, um, on his last legs. He is barely standing, and he reaches into his, into his armor and pulls That's out a shard <laughs> of chardling. He looks at you. And he looks up into the air and goes, Deep Dura, guide my hand. Oh, I feel your warmth embracing me. I feel her blazing passion warm my soul. And he crushes the crystal and the fireball encased within its within its crystalline bounds explodes. Now, do you all give me deck saves? You need a DC of 15. Oh, well, it's not the way I'm Polar bears are not particularly dexterous. So who's going first, let's? I'll go first. I'll get the failure out of the way so all you guys can pass. <laughs> oh, I got an 18. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. <laughs> you will take half damage. I got 16. 16, you will take half damage. And self Go, uh, oh, oh. All right, I'll go. Fair enough. 17. Hey. Nice. Okay, so you will all take half damage. Not 20. Uh, Ailey, you're actually not in range. So you're, oh, you're nice. actually fine. <laughs> um, she reflects so, anyway. She still dodged anyway. Uh, so 29, so you take 15. Okay, that's cool. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Looking too hard. 14, 14, you round down. Um, so I have, a, I have so, a question. Yes. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. I was going to say shield, but shield doesn't work because it's an AC thing. Never mind. No. Okay. However, Zardarak is a burning corpse. Oh, he's dead. And for a moment, you stare down at the defeated king of the Sunblight Grey Dwarves, the Sunblight Durgar. But before you can clinch victory, the Chardelin Dragon opens its eyes. Mm. Should have punched this thing. <laughs> They're the inanimate object. Yeah, I you might missed. not have missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big mice. Zelf is. It's your round. So I haven't actually used the charge, does that mean? No, I haven't. I, I, I haven't touched anything with the ring. <laughs> uh, so oh, no, no. If every time you cast it, you will like there'll be like a, a goat will fly off into the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> you just you just you just missed with your like this the the goat of force. Um. So. <laughs> The, the dragon's eyes are opening, but it's still made of shardling, is it? 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's complete. This is a Shardland Dragon. Um, um, Aram, I don't know if you've got the image you can put again, because it's, it's, I know you put it on before. You're not putting any pressure on Aram. He's looking for the last <laughs> Yeah, yeah, give me a sec. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, when I see that happen, I'm going to um, just instantly turn around and cast uh, Shatter again. Wow, okay. So give me the damage. This is a con save 15, but inorganic materials has disadvantage on the save. Okay. It has plus four to con, and is it so disadvantage? Disadvantage versus fifteen. Please okay. God, come on, do me a favor here. Uh, hey. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it to six. Okay, roll for damage, and uh, now that it's it's you won't get double damage on it, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Uh, now that it, because, but you you were when oh, it was inanimate, yes. inanimate crystal. Yeah, it's no longer mm -hmm. an inanimate crystal. Uh, so I did 12 damage to it. Okay. There's a big chunk of crystal is not... And there is no, there's no guards so. near it, is there? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, uh, Graham. Uh, yeah. It's been brought to my attention in chat that I have uncanny dodge. And uh, so I could have half the damage from the... You could have half your damage again, yeah. But I had to mention it in the time, so never mind. It's just for future reference. I it's have that. Right. It's happened now, yeah. yeah it's happened. <laughs> Can't um, but remember, so you did have temporary to... 10 hit points from... Uh... Oh, that, that was gone a while ago. So oh, I'm going to... The member berries? Uh, yeah. Member? <laughs> and then I... Uh... Ah, member. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, my so, next character. Uh, uh, so I'll I'll run up to this uh, this dragon and try to stab it in the eye. I guess that's very um, very brave. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Joe says it in the most condescending way, brave means stupid. Curran, do you remember what happened with the last dragon? <laughs> yeah, I he do. But I've got uncanny dodge this time. Get... <laughs> Actually, no, the dragon didn't die. It flew away. So I've got to. Uh, Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Be before you can do anything, please, um, do you have an intelligence of four or more? Clearly not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as, as you run towards it, its malevolent pre presence forces oh you to take a step. Your heart seems to stop for a moment and you feel yourself unable to step towards this creature. In fact, all you want to do is run away. It's going to take an effort of will to approach it. I need you to give me a... Wisdom saving throw. You have a vantage. You have a vantage. On a wisdom. I'm punch anything. Uh, here we go. Nineteen. Nineteen. You yes, go. you manage to shake off the fearful aura and run forward and strike your rapier into the crystalline form. We have to do the attack roll, don't I? Of course you do. And I, I'm sure that rapiers are going to be particularly effective against crystal. Of course. Of course, especially when it's the eye, the the bit that opened up. You were like, "This the eye opens," and I'm like, "Okay." It, it actually answer. doesn't have immunity to any kind of piercing damage. Either. Oh, okay. Just, no, pff, uh, maybe it does. I've <laughs> maybe it does. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, uh, no, it has a lot higher than the level AC. Um, so yeah. no. Uh, next up, gone as the uh, the polar bear. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I will. Well, before you do anything, can you roll Speak to animals, it's, it's an animal, malevolent, right? it's malevolent presence. You need to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, I don't have advantage on that. What's wisdom? Oh, I got plus seven to wisdom, though. That's pretty cool. I mean, I would have rolled a four. That advantage really came in handy. It really okay. did. <laughs> what do I got? Uh, I got 16. 16. Yeah. You you managed to shake off. It's it's the, the fearful aura. You can do what you wish to do. Um, can I kind of try to run towards Graham to grab him and see if there's any route of escape of escape uh you absolutely can you can see that underneath the the five foot high metal platform that the dragon is standing on there actually is a tunnel that runs underneath so um you can pull him down into that if you wish Graham or the dragon <laughs> yeah yeah um, i will you pull Graham down that. into that i would like to just try to get him away from it because i don't think we can fight this thing <laughs> Okay. And can I, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So, are you leaving Salfis there as well, or are you pulling him into the the tunnel too? If I can grab the two of them, sure, I will grab them. Um, yeah, you you can. You absolutely can. And um, I, will look up, I will roar towards uh, Ailey 
And he's kind of like, well, I'm sure she'll see the polar bear grabbing the two people and jumping onto the platform yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, Alias, you're around. The villagers around you are running, are running to try and get away from this So thing. just chaotic. It really cut, but they're all trying to get away from it. Okay. Uh, I see the polar bear with a new friend and someone I still haven't really met hide. And I, uh, mm -hmm. I jump in after them if I can. They yeah, seem to you know what they're doing. Can. This was very, very wise as on the dragon's round, it bursts out with its radiant breath weapon, which explodes out, completely decimating the Durgar Hammer. There was nothing left of it. It then flaps its enormous crystalline wings. You are buffeted even below this platform as it rises into the air. It rises up the tunnel towards Ten Towns. And that is where we are going to end season one. And that is where we're going to end this episode. We Thank did you. not do what we wanted to do at all there. We <laughs> oh. failed. We failed miserably. <laughs> I, I survived. My only object tonight was to survive and I've done that spectacularly so. <laughs> well, and it, it has been an absolute honour. Um, it has been an honour being a part of D&D, uh, &D, Ram and the Frost Maiden a, a, a stream. It's been an absolute pleasure GMing for all of you. And it's been fantastic, Son, having you for a guest. And as always, Aram, thank you so much for your incredible production. It was my and pleasure. Before I hand over to Owen, who is going to do, as always, our end of show chat, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has supported us, who has subbed us, who has mentioned us on social media, and who has been here every week. I want to say a particular mention to Lauren Obo Crazy. Thank you so much um, for being in chat and helping moderate our brand new Twitch channel. It's a massive honor, and obviously it was a huge pleasure to play with you. Um, I think that's all my thank yous. Um, I will pass over to, to I'll say Zalf is. To, to okay. Owen. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Um, well, what what, uh, what an episode. Um, I think, first of all, we, we got to give a round of applause to Niall to actually go to the effort in making uh, himself yes, blue. Yes. Because we, <laughs> I made a joke that he was not aware of at all saying if we hit 10 subscribers in a stream, Niall will go blue for the finale. And it instantly happened, and I felt guilty, but he went and did it. So fair, fair play now. Hello. I will get you back somehow. I, I, I've done my hair. It's like, look, this, looks, this looks ridiculous. No. <laughs> I think it's a good look. I think ridiculous, you look great. Yeah. It looks like I'm going to primary school for the first day of my friends. That's what it looks like. Um, after that, son, thank you for joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, your first game with Does It Roll and Joe, who tends to try and kill guests. No, I, and the players. I loved it. Thanks for having me. It was really, really fun. <laughs> was I was hoping you. I would die. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so it's morbid. <laughs> lot, yeah, there was a lot to unpack in the episode. Um, I'm going to start off with you, Joe. How do you think the episode went compared to where you thought it would go? Because there was a lot of choices we made where. I imagine um, it weren't what you expected. I had no idea how this episode was going to go. Like I had different ideas for set pieces. Um, I had different set ideas for where the final battle would take place. Um, the book gives you some really cool options. Like there's a throne room where there's um, a, um, a myconoid, one of those kind of like underdark mushrooms, like one of the sovereigns is there and it's a really cool set piece. There's another set piece where you're in the um, temple to uh, Dark Dura who um, Zardok believes he's he's being possessed by not not the childlane demon, um, and so, but I didn't I didn't know it was very much down to what you each did either in the Underdark or exploring the fortress. Um, one of the things I actually thought you would do is when you were outside the uh, the fortress, I thought you might go through the window, and then there was some stuff there. Um, I didn't think you were going to go through the entrance at all, um, but it was it worked out really well. It was quite a cool scene with the halfling. Um, so I, it was super fun. I had no idea what was going to happen at all. I, um, and it worked out really well. And we did it down to pretty much the minute as well, which is pretty amazing as well. All, thing, all things considered, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess we were with Graham and Son first. You guys kind of went through a weird sort of what, water slide, funhouse, tunnel of doom type thing. <laughs> <laughs> you make of your whole situation. I mean, so, I loved it. <laughs> like a lot. Um, I mean, I, I really did... And maybe this is a testament to Joe's DMing, but I always find it really hard as like another DM to split and then split again, because that's what happened. And so I was really enjoying the <laughs> very different dynamic that was being established. 
I'm not going to lie. I looked at the time and saw he's like, okay, we're splitting the part. That's fine. They split you. He's like, what is he doing? He's never going to come back together. <laughs> Um, split the split. <laughs> yeah, I mean, never, never slightly split. spoiler, the split, the different choices you made, that they were very much active choices. So what you did depend on how you would enter that room or if you entered that room. So there was different ways that, like, you probably would have ended up in that same scene, but the way that the scene would have started would have been very different. Um, Leads me on to my next question. Would Karen have definitely ended up flirting with first the mother and then the fiance? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Kermit and Charmer's way in, in, into ruling the world, out of getting the world destroyed. I'm not sure which way you were going with a Kern. Next time I, you I should just, just thinking... charm the dragon. <laughs> I wanted to be uh, in a good position when things went down. So I was more like, if I just pretend to be her and I'm like, oh, I've seen the error of my ways. You don't need to lock me up. I'm on your side, blah, 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 blah. Then if he's about to murder you, for example, I can get in the way. I don't know, um, I think it went well. It definitely made I tr- sense. Tried, uh, that was the idea, anyway. Um, also, I thought kissing him and stabbing him was fantastic. It's good. That was such <laughs> a cool moment. He's like, no, my woman. I'm like, I was, you, know, you never had a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Chat did kick off for that. They did enjoy that, to be fair. That was good. Um, <laughs> Niall, our, our whole situation. Um, just last time, <laughs> first of all, I made a couple of decisions and I was like, this is definitely not going to make Niall happy. So I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to let Niall make a few decisions. And he immediately threw the ball back to me going, you should make another decision on. <laughs> it's not like that has gone so badly. Why? Because gone, if he makes decisions, things go wrong. Nothing that he tries to do works. <laughs> yeah, Zalphys has worked perfectly. I just hope poor Nimsy made it out. I don't know. Like, I know, right? Where's Nimsy got, Joe? He was on the ego with you. And, and uh, Valen Harpel, she's she's around too. I mean, so assuming yeah, actually, we do that's one do... thing we didn't find the wizard again. No, oh, and, yeah. and she is there. That was just an, but that, that opportunity never presented itself. Um, there is. We are going to start season two in some blight, and there will be a race to get to the ten towns and try and save the towns from um, the Chardlin dragon. So that will be the first episode of season. Yeah. So two. on that note, if you're if you're watching and not following, you should drop a follow because season two will be kicking off early January when we align <laughs> yeah, our calendars. Absolutely. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 as long as Joe doesn't kill us uh, again, it'll be great fun. Um, I would say the whole setting, um, in terms of what we played tonight, Joe. You kept saying every time something bad happened, and we're like, "What are you doing?" You said it's in the book. How much of this is Joe, <laughs> Joe Trier creativity, and how much of it's the book? No, um, this is pretty true to the book. To be fair, um, obviously the entrance from East Haven to, um. The sunblight was the teleportation that was some guy came up with because it was just getting the stories to align. And the underdark thing, that was my thing because I thought the the Moosegart conspiracy is a big part of the fortress, but obviously you have to meet the right people in the right place. And the fortress is actually huge. So within the time allotted, we couldn't do it a room to room dungeon. And I, I don't think that would have been necessarily a fun stream. So it was about creating an opportunity for you to get straight into that conspiracy with the stupid moose gut son. I thought <laughs> it was a way of doing that, um, him being a bit too blunt. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, it is pretty pretty close to the book, to be honest. Um, the as, as per the book, they do suggest that as you arrive at the fortress, the Chardlin dragon leaves straight away. So you have a choice of going into the fortress or chasing after the Chardlin dragon. Um, but I wanted to have a more of a set piece with you battling with it still there. I do, I do it. like. I assume some of this is out of your DM style, well, but it does feel like um, this scenario particularly, but also just as a whole, which is the coast are going a bit more down the kind of gritty, not quite horror, but horror esque, darker themes, and it had very mm. creepy vibes. The whole sunlight and underworld sacrifice room thing yeah uh oh the the villages that's not in the original one that the sacrifice stuff isn't there um but i mean i don't think anyone could have predicted you flying down the tunnel on giant eagles like that was just <laughs> such an amazing set piece like it is so like i can just imagine that so vividly um it was incredible so i mean props to all of you that was amazing this is one of the few castles i've not had um feather fall on it doesn't nothing like every episode i've had a chance to cast feather fall that would have been great and not had oh it. yeah it could have saved a lot of people a lot of times a lot of things um one thing i do want to talk about is i think joe's under common accent was pretty solid better than his irish accent oh god yeah <laughs> I, 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 not- I have i won't do irish accents i have promised i did consider it actually <laughs> for um Valen, but i realized that um, when i've said what i've promised i promised um the fact that no one understood under common and you had this 
that was a little fantastic gibberish. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I, I, swear, I could have sworn that someone had said they had undercome, and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm going to have to talk to myself in nonsense for this entire. <laughs> so, like, it um, is unusual not to have an edge lord player who just takes undercommon so he can talk to some evil people at some point in a group. Yeah. I thought Gordon said he had like nine languages. I just assume. No, <laughs> no? I no. might dreamt that. No, he can speak Pura Mordio for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think sure. Fearable might have that. And I think uh, both Zelfers and I can speak Dwarvish, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they under, uh, I mean, they do understand Dwarvish, but it's just a little suspect if you know you start. This goes sus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I took Draconic because I heard Dragon. I was like, uh, that makes yeah. sense. There you go. <laughs> Maybe um, you can talk the Dragon down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, ten, you could have talked to that one kobold. That's the one person yeah. you could have talked to the whole game. <laughs> I was so upset that you didn't get another kobold. I've been desperately trying to like crowbar kobolds in. Why kobold are we going to try to save a kobold that's trying to stab our friend Nimsy? <laughs> You're making him an you, ally. <laughs> again, if you had gone somewhere else, there would have been a kobold that would have taken you through the fortress and told you. Was there just an empty room with a kobold in it? There is literally an empty room with a kobold in it. He was yeah. going to try and run away from you. Like, <laughs> what, what kind of like, are you sure he just this? Like a real estate agent? I know, I, I'm not I, getting near you. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, I do want to give one shout out to um, my favorite rule lawyer, Aram and Co. Backed me up on the bag of holding and a few other things. Actually, you know what? As we didn't actually mess you up enough, because when that bag got hit, anytime a bag of holding takes damage, anytime, if there's a rip or tear or anything, it unfolds an extra dimensional astral space into that. So there should have been catastrophic consequences for that. No, 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 no. If you put a bag of holding into a bag of holding, that right, it blows up. But, but if it, you if pierce you, it... But that, no, that just everything in the bag of oh, holding gets sucked into... Put a bag um, of holding. Oh, that's worse. Of you just poor guy. Yeah. No! You have to like, all of season two would have been going into the astral realm to get Nimsy yeah. back. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> season two would be uh, season three. It'll be like Back to the Future, going back into the wild west. <laughs> um, you can tell, obviously, for those who don't know, Aram is also a massive DM because he couldn't help but come yeah. in with the rules. <laughs> the Ring um, of the Ram is my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing. It's my favorite magic item. I always loved it. I had it on multiple. Uh, you know, characters when I used to uh, play second edition, I just wanted it to connect so badly. I was hoping funnily so enough, much. No. You would be that's my... a really good item when you hit something with it. Yeah, too. it's my least favorite magic item, funnily enough. So my first ever character um, was a <laughs> was a, 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 a second edition cleric, and he had a cloak of the bat and the ring of the ram, and they're like my favorite items because I just remember being like twelve and going around a dungeon and. Like whenever we had a long rest, I'd always turn into a bat and hang upside down. <laughs> like, um, so I always <laughs> give those items, uh, items out. So I'm going to quickly. We're going to do the thing to give away. Um, uh, do you want to do any? Is there any que questions well, the, from chat? Bear with me. Or do you want to do bear the? With uh, me. Who's running this, the after show? Okay. Why are we running the giveaway, guys? If you have any questions for the, the yeah. crew, Alf is on a power to, trip. Be, feel free. To, <laughs> I am feel free. I, I was in the middle of it doing. I was going to throw to them to come up with questions, give them time to think of something, and we'll do the giveaway. That's a really good way of doing it, isn't it? Thank you. I segue that seamlessly. So, guys, uh, if you do want to do the giveaway, I love DIR, all the one word, and we will be giving. What are we giving away this week, Joe? Just so I am. No. Um, we how many copies of um, Rhyme and the Frostman have we got for D&D Beyond have we got one or two 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 so Next. we give away two copies of Rhyme and the Frostmaiden on D&D Beyond um, which is is how I, I mean it's, if you don't use D&D Beyond you absolutely should it's so convenient it's so cool when you're in a situation like this where you're on the computer and we have got a WizKids uh, miniature set which has got some um, awesome little figures in okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to give away the WizKids miniature set if you are a sub, guys, you have twice the likelihood to win. You basically get entered twice uh, versus a normal follower. Um, and for the WizKids set, we're going to have the winner in three, two, one. Nightmare 07. Congratulations, Pat. <laughs> yeah. So if you throw a message to me here, I'll message you just quickly now. If you can message me your uh, address, we can get it sent to you. Shortly, COVID and all that, and be, how long it'll take. Um, so I I will send it um, hopefully on Tuesday. Um, I sent off a whole, I sent off three last week. Um, so they'll I don't know how long it takes. Depends where you are in the world. Um, as soon as as soon as they get to you. 
So message me um, on my personal Twitch there. I've linked uh, Nightmare. And just send your address and we can get it sorted. Next up, we're going to give away a copy of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden on D&D Beyond. It's basically a code that you reclaim the book on. So if you already have a copy, guys, you can give it to a friend or someone else who might need it. So the winner of that, first one is Omni Exploratorin. It's a hell of a name to say. That's, that's very cool. cool. <laughs> um, well, the first thing you do when you get this book, check out the chapter on Sunblight because the artwork is incredible. Um, there's some really, really cool pictures in there. I know Aram has been showing a few of them throughout the stream. I'll check it and out. And the last one, then another code for D&D Beyond is going to be given to Yanaril. Yanaril. I think, Yanaril, did, I think Yanaril won something last week. I, th I think Yanaril ran their Whiskids last week. I remember, I'm sure Ooh, I remember writing nice. that down. Yeah, so there you go. You've got the full set now, Yanaril. <laughs> that shows you the benefit of being a subscriber and a subscriber so they've won twice amazing that's our giveaway I'm going to quickly scroll through chat I don't think I saw any questions other than everyone screaming uh, congrats explaining that their username is Latin and I'm obviously uncultured <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we've anything major so while we're looking to see if any more questions come in I'm going to give everyone around the table a chance to tell us about themselves and what they do in the on, in the internet on the internet I sound like a boomer so first up our guest uh son do you want to tell everyone what you do and where you come from um i hail from the united states of america <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. um, okay. you can find me <laughs> yeah i the whole game i was like do not mimic the english accent don't do it because <laughs> um, i'm awful at it it quickly slips into australian and i know that's a problem um but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Bog Boogie. I write graphic novels, comics, I work in games, and I basically try to do as much as I can. So um, yeah, that's about me. I like creating stuff. Amazing. Uh, we'll have to link some of your things. I've, I've uh, been following you on Twitter for the last few days. It's, um, you've got some cool stuff. I say it's a mess. Good on you, Jeff. <laughs> 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 and as, as always, we'll go around the table, start with you, Karen. What are you up to? On the internet, the moment I'm just I'm just studying. Anyway, then um, yeah, I'm making films, although they're not really publicly available at the moment. It's all film festival stuff. But other than that, you'd find me on Twitter in the handle that is down here, I believe. I'm not sure. Anyway, we never yeah. get it right. We never uh, get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter handle, or you'll find me on the yeah, nailed it. Well, one one of these ones, right? The and um, you can find me on the How We Roll Discord and the Does It Roll Discord. Uh, yeah, that's all. Nice. What about yourself, Niall? I assume you've been cleaning yourself for the next three days. Probably not <laughs> oh, your I food, cannot but... <laughs> wait to have a shower. I cannot wait. Uh, um, yeah, you can find me on the How We Roll Discord. You can find me on the Does It Roll Discord. And you can also find me on my Twitter that I believe Aram just posted in the uh, chat there. HWR Podcast Niall. Uh, yeah, that's, that's me. Uh, Joseph, what about yourself? Um, so I am the, the regular DM for How We Roll podcast, uh, along with Scott Dord, who DMs our two-headed serpent campaign. You can find more of my stuff, but also more of most people here's stuff at uh, howwerollpodcast.com. And you can download uh, Call of Cthulhu, Curse of Strahd, and Rhyme of the Frost Maiden episodes on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you can find podcasts. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at HWR Podcast or at Joe the GM. Um, on at Joe the GM, I am running a choose your own adventure Call of Cthulhu um, story that you can choose what happens every day and it's coming towards its conclusion so check that out um, in terms of does it roll it's definitely worth mentioning that we have something coming up not next week we're going to have a, at least one week off because it's been a very epic nine ten weeks <laughs> but we're going to be returning in december with a chaosium um, call of cthulhu live stream um, called what's it called crimson letters which is from the keepers book it's one of the sandy peterson scenarios very very cool um really worth checking out and we're going to be returning next year hopefully with the finale of curse of strad streamed live and hopefully season two of rhyme of the frost maiden i think that's everything so a whole lot of content if you're next lots four months, lots of yeah. months. Whole bunch. yeah <laughs> definitely follow us to um, find out what's coming because there's some really cool stuff and i know aram you've got some amazing Speaking. stuff yeah Soon there you too. go speaking of more content than does it roll joe lo you're loving you're taking all my great segues from me man uh, <laughs> a man who makes this look so good people were uh, raving about how lovely and snowy our background looked 
Uh, our producer Aram makes us look and sound uh, so amazing. Even when Joe gives him last minute requests of, hey, you know that picture in that book? Go find that picture. <laughs> Aram, what are you up to on the internet? Tell people where they can find your amazing stuff. I actually bought an eight pack of snow videos that I can Luma <laughs> key out. So there's like snow that goes sideways and snow falling in the distance and really intense snow for a blizzard. But this one is like the nicest. Uh, if you want to find anything of mine, you can go to twitter.com slash Vardian or aramvartian.com where my portfolio and all of the links to the various shows that I'm working on, including the I Hunt one uh, called Cash for Teeth that I'll be launching next month. Uh, but I'm I wanted, so excited ooh, oh, for that I one. Could I, not wait, I could not yeah. wait to play that one. It's going to be awesome. I also wanted to say uh, your Love Short game for anyone who enjoys those picture story games where there's relationships and you, there's a lot of dialogue, right? Love Short is so much fun. It's so it's such an interesting entry into that genre. And I had a great time doing the uh, the test run of it. And it was just, it's just a really cool game. And I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed that. I mean, so much to me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll have to share it so we can check it out. It's too. such a cool game. Yeah, so check it out. Love Shore. Uh, you can find it, I'm sure, on your Twitter as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. You'll have to follow her on Twitter, guys. Okay, look at that. Um, last but not least, then most importantly, actually, to be fair, is myself. Mm. I'm uh. <laughs> thanks, <Niall. laughs> uh. smooth transition. Yeah, I'm uh, how we roll own. Um, that's the mess letters at the end of my name. I'm part of the how we roll podcast. You can find me on the how we roll discord or at how we roll.com on the podcast. Uh, I'm also obviously here on does it roll and the does it roll discord. I also do a bit of streaming myself on. Twitch at How We Roll Own again. You can find me on Twitter at the same username. Basically, anywhere you found How We Roll Own, there's not many owns in the world. Um, <laughs> what we are doing, Ooh. because we're coming to Christmas, we talk about different shows we're going to be starting and not starting. Everyone's different parts of the world and going home for Christmas. I'm probably going to do some gaming streaming on Does It Roll of Baldur's Gate 3. We'll see if we get one or two of these guys in with us, just to keep us ticking over so you guys can say hello and stuff. But I think that's pretty much it. Anyone else want to say anything before we sign out and say goodbye to everyone? Just thank you, everyone, for joining us for the first season. Thanks for the subs. Thanks yeah. for the follows. And thank you for just watching us. Yeah. And thanks for being blue, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I mean, I think probably as Niles led the way, I think we will probably be starting the next season with Zalfiz and Graham in full cosplay. <laughs> Pretty yep. sure. I'm already short with large hair. I can do <laughs> At a smart ass boot. <laughs> I will say, um, look, to everyone who has dropped, like Niall said, anyone who's dropped a subscribe or anything with anonymous subscriptions um, donated today, it, it's meant a lot to us. It keeps us going. It means what we're doing isn't a waste of time. Like, we understand that people actually want to watch it. So, even today, we got a raid from uh, Lucid Ray um, with 18 people. Yeah. So, it means a lot to us. We're going to keep going uh, with Christmas and COVID and everything's going to be a bit weird, but we'll keep it going between then. I would like to say thank you to, um, especially look to Ram. I know we say it every week, and to Joe. Joe has a family and runs like a full time job, and then panics about storytelling more than he should. Um, so those two guys definitely for me, um, you know, with our talent as players, obviously. There's a lot of this down to them though. So thank you. This guys. was very much your game. The uh, there were some epic moments. I absolutely loved um, jamming for you for you all today. It was an absolute pleasure. And obviously, Son, you're more than welcome back as a guest in season two. It was a real pleasure to have you on. It was an yeah. honor. I had a lot of fun. I was so nervous, and you guys made it really comfortable. <laughs> so I'm happy. <laughs> and at a very important point, he was one of our first subscribers. So uh, Cocker Heckus makes a great point that Joe has to, for the first episode back, get the bald cap and roll. Yeah. <laughs> the classic D DM look in um, D D. So uh, that would be very cool. I, I mean, uh, I know he doesn't do it anymore, but I know when Chris Perkins used to do his acquisition ink street uh, shows and he used to dress up in different costumes, yeah. so I was always very jealous. And I think he did the uh, the classic GM in one one show. I'll, I'll think about yes. it. We'll see. He <laughs> painted himself as a skeleton in one, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think that's all from us guys so we're going to sign off on season one thank you everyone and to all our special guests who played as well some of you are in the chat and that really appreciate it it's been amazing yeah thank you so much thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> goodbye everyone take away away